Can you hear a buzzing? Well, I'm currently ripping that. Uh, the final disc of it. And also there's wind outside. But anyway, I've got this package. It's from World of Books. So clearly it's not a fucking book. Uh, because I'm clearly not a big reader. Might be due to the fact I'm dyslexic. Who knows? But this cost me £2 with free delivery. It's always says as great as Hicks. Stop the clocks. Yep. Uh, again, my dad had this CD. And um, I know where disc 2 is. Because um, it's in my hi-fi. Because uh, my hi-fi that I've got at my granny's used to be my dad's. Because he never fucking used it. Yeah. Uh, but uh, disc 2 was in there. But where the box is and where disc 1 is, I haven't a fucking clue. Ooh, a little scratch on there. And um, I'm going to have to wait a bit. Um, yeah, I'm go not long. I'm going to have to wait 5 minutes until I can rip it. And then, disc two looks perfectly fine. As long as they rip, uh, they should be perfectly fine. I remember um, some of the members of Oasis uh, formed a group called uh, BDI. Uh, and actually, I remember actually quite recently seeing uh, the free singles uh, CD um, in the garage, but I decided not to get it out. But yeah, basically this includes all the greatest hits, basically. And I think they only released one album after this, which was uh, Dig, out, Dig Out Your Soul, I think it was called. Yeah. Condition of this, it's a little bit eh. Not awful. Let's have a look at the booklet. Wow, it, it's quite okay. It's quite a thick one. It's quite a thick booklet. Well, let's have a look at it, nonetheless, shall we? There we go. I've also learnt with this camera um, for things to be in focus, they have to be a little bit of a distance. To you, this looks like I'm right next to the lens, but actually I'm probably about mm, 8 to 10 inches away from the lens. I should probably get a macro lens for uh, this camera, actually. And when I can afford one, I'll probably get one. Again, my, my dad, uh, he had a zoom lens um, for a camera he had back in the 80s, or possibly late 70s. And again, he doesn't know where it is, because I think I could use that, so I could use a Micro Four Thirds adapter to use it with my camera, because that would come in useful. Because although this camera does have a zoom lens, it's only 14 um, millimeters to... 42? Yeah, 42 millimeters. And there they all are, looking a bit miserable because... Well, they're British. <laughs> Always miserable. We can't look happy. No, we can never look happy in anything. We've always got to be miseries. And moaners. Yeah, Americans think British people don't complain about things. Oh yes, we fucking do. <laughs> just got locked. We just... We just give it a lot more subtly. Um, I think, but yeah. I think probably my two favourite track. I thought my favourite Oasis track of all time is Wonderwall, which is on here. And I do really like Slide Away as well, which comes straight after, but yeah. Um, there's only, I think there's nine, 18 tracks on here. Mm. They're not numbered, but I'm, if I remember rightly, there are 18 tracks. But you might be wondering, 18 tracks? 18? How come there's two discs? There's a reason for that is uh, most of Oasis' songs, um, at least uh, singles anyway, are 
over five minutes. In fact, I remember, I think Slide Away is um, over seven minutes, if I remember rightly. So yeah, they didn't put the single versions, they put the ones, the, the actual album versions or the full length versions on this. Which is why it's uh, split across two discs, so there's uh, nine tracks per disc on this. So that's why there's that on there. The definitive collection, yeah. Um, Oasis albums actually this year got released on vinyl. And I would like to see Stop the Clocks be released um, on vinyl. I'm talking about the greatest disc because there was uh, an EP CD of uh, Stop the Clocks, which had uh, four uh, never before heard tracks on it. Which I'm just like, ooh. Amazing. But yeah, since that's done ripping, let's see if this will rip with a slight little scratch on it. Hopefully, um, everything is just going to be fine and hunky dory and everything is just going to work absolutely 100%. He says, not fucking knowing. Root. Okay, so. So let's just see. Oh, and by the way, if you are going to rip CDs using um, Windows Media Player, make sure you are connected to the internet when you're doing it. And the only reason I'm saying that is is because if you're not connected to the internet, okay. Oh no, slide away is six minutes fourteen, not seven minutes fourteen. Okay, but uh, basically. If you're connected to the internet when ripping a CD in Windows Media Player, it will search the internet or Windows own, scroll on that for the track listings and everything, so, and the track numbers and everything. So basically all the album details. So it means you don't have to enter them in manually, because a lot of CDs um, nowadays, and probably even then, uh, couldn't be asked putting track data on there. So it is nice when it detects what it is and just rips it. Yeah, but this thing seems to be ripping uh, perfectly fine. So, yeah, happy days. Happy, happy, happy days. Well, if they do release this on vinyl, um, I'll definitely get it on vinyl. I would be getting Oasis's, you know, singular albums on vinyl, but the problem is at the minute they're so bloody expensive. They're, I think, they're about a ten or more. And just a regular vinyl album, and I know HMV did a deal where you could get uh, all their albums. I think, I think it was all for uh, seventy pound. So yeah, fucking amazing deal there. But anyway, got this. How many days? I went on for a bit. Hooray! Okay. What? Just ask me. Just ask me this. What the fuck is this? Has an odd smell to it and I've no idea what the fuck it is. Anyway, this thing I ordered by mistake. Uh, but fuck it, um, it, it only cost me £2 including postage. So, yeah. It's Oasis! Come on. Hang, I'll use manual. There we go, so it's Oasis. Stop the Clocks EP. And, um, I can hear a helicopter going on by. Oh, this folds out, okay. Okay, we'll have a little look at this first. Yeah. Can you hear that helicopter going by? It couldn't be any. Also, a textured ish finish to this. So, yeah, this cost me £2 um, with uh, four tracks on it. So, not many tracks. If we get the CD out. Yeah, yeah, not a lot. You can see how little actually is. If I can get this right. Um, there we go, you can see how 
you know, little of the CD is actually being used on this thing. Oh, I never showed the front either. There it is. But obviously, uh, it's a little bit confusing when Oasis's Greatest Hits was called Stop the Clocks. Now, I bought this um, thinking it was a 7-inch EP vinyl record. It's clearly not. It's a CD. But um, I didn't realise that until after ordering it. But, you know, Sing Six, um, not rare, but an uncommon thing. It's not rare, it's just uncommon. Then, uh, yeah. But I think these... I think, I swear these were released on the Greatest Six one as well. Also, I'll be amazed if... Um, Windows Media Play will be able to find track listing for these. Probably not, so I'll probably have to um, manually label them. But there's only four tracks on there, but... Yeah. It's making my disk drive make a really weird noise. You also get this little thing included as well. And for £2, it's not bad, I guess. Um, so I decided, you know, for two quid, might might as well... But what it is, uh, I'm not sure where this is. Is that even meant to go in there? Or is it meant to go somewhere else? No, I guess it'll have to go in there. Is there anything else in there? Cause it's not seeming to want to, to go all the way in. Why do you not wish to go all the way in, my lad? Come on. In, 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 in. There we go. So yeah, it doesn't look like it's going to get that track data. Um, I'll reopen it again in a second and just see if it does. But yeah, I thought I thought this would be a 7-inch uh, vinyl record. Uh, but it's not. It's just a CD, unfortunately. Um, but it's uh, quite nice, actually, for the artwork and packaging to the actual Stop the Clock's Greatest Hicks um, two-disc CD. Which actually, to be honest, if... Um, if it was just, I think it's, if it was five minutes shorter, uh, they could have all fit it on one disc because um, disc one is 45 minutes, I think disc two is 40 minutes or 41 minutes or five, if it was five or six minutes shorter, they could have fit it all on one disc. So yeah, but that's that. Nick Nat Paddywhack. Um, make sure you give your dog plenty. Plenty bones. Uh, gonna have to do this one extremely quickly. Um, I've just opened this packet, and uh, this came very quickly. Actually, inside is this. Yep, yeah, that's greatest hits on cassette. I was wasn't the way it was released on cassette. But yeah, there's uh, 18 tracks, and interestingly, if you look on the back. The tracks are listed 1 to 18 on both sides, rather than uh, 1 to 9 on side A and side B. It's got a Dolby B, and it is... This is a clearly ferric type 1. Um, no idea what it sounds like, because my cassette plays at my granny's house, but... Yeah, it's ferric tape. Scanner, but... I don't know, because um, uh, i465 cassette that I had uh, actually sounded pretty good. Okay, uh, yeah, it's just loads of information about each song about when it was released. Albums and ooh, videos. Yeah, not DVDs or even Blu-rays, videos. Because that was before then. Oh, oh wow. Da -na -na -na. But, um, yeah. I picked this up for, uh, two. I think it was. Actually, I think it was less than two pounds. If I remember right, they copyright 1996. Okay. Uh, the Great Six CD actually has. One more track, I think, I believe. 
and also uh, the hicks are in the grease in a different order um, on the CD they start with the layers and then go backwards but this one I believe it's the other way around it also gives you the track lengths so yeah that's nice that's nice I am got a really dry sore throughout at the minute but yeah that's nice Good day, children, and today from my pocket I produce a lollipop. Yes, I got this uh, free along with a lemon wong from Sambuca's, and I did specifically ask for it because, of course, I want a free lolly. Why wouldn't I? So I had two. <laughs> anyway, I, I went to a Poundland outlet. Yeah. It's basically the same as a regular Poundland box. Um, they get a lot of the stuff flax. For example, Poundland generally rotates their stock quite often. So, for example, they, you could still buy a 14-pack of Kodak batteries from this Poundland. Whereas now, Poundland has generally just switched to um, a newer style of packaging for the Kodak batteries and that. But anyway, Dags, I bought some CDs. Uh, the first one I got, this works caught my eye, and I did have this. I remember getting it for Christmas actually, but um, unfortunately I have no idea where it's gone. I found I found the box, but I have no idea where the disc is. It's Gorillas Demon Days, yes. Um, I also have this on a vinyl as well. I'm trying to think where's the best to open this. It's always a bit uh, fiddly. What what time is it? 14. Okay. Ah, God, isn't it? never easy when CDs are shrink wrapped. There's just no easy way of uh, opening them. It's not in too bad condition actually, um, and that says uh, not dirt, that is just a list of um, tracks. It includes like uh, the singles basically. Oh, oh, okay, this is just a Music Magpie thing. Uh, yeah, so if anyone hasn't used one of them, then there you go. Disc itself. I think this probably has uh, my. F Probably my favourite artwork out of any Gorillaz album. I do, and I think, and it is definitely my favourite uh, Demon Days. Uh, yeah, the disc looks uh, perfectly fine, and also much uh, nicer tabs there. That was uh, cheap and nasty. Get official Gorilla ringtone. Oh, yes, yes. These were the days where you would have to basically um, dial up numbers. In order to get ringtones, in fact, some ringtones back in the day, you had to pay for. Yeah, I know, paying for a fucking ringtone. But yes, back then, that was a thing. Oh, yes, oh. I also had uh, the Gorillaz um, DVD with a uh, DVD-ROM on it as well. But I think I found the, the DVD-ROM. CD-ROM for the PC, but don't know where the rest is. Let's have a look at this, because it's got some nice artwork on it. This is actually quite appropriate uh, for Halloween. Coming up, at least at the time of recording. You have no idea how wide this is. I'm literally having to stretch my arms out in order to get all this on. 2D Noodle. Kicks with guns. Come on. There we go. You want to focus, don't you? 2D Noodle, Russell, and of course Murdoch. I can't actually tell if that's in focus or not. Ugh. Other side. Frank's album art. Information. More artwork of little uh, gremlin things. I have no idea what the fuck they are. You don't get this in the vinyl, actually, this artwork. 
It's disappointing that. Got all this nice, lovely fold-out book artwork on the CD, but yet the vinyl, nah. And the vinyl costs well. I think it cost me twenty, twenty, twenty-five pound. I can't remember how much exactly it cost me, but it still cost me a lot. Also, with Gorillas, it's hard to say how many albums they've had because um, you've got Gorillas, which was obviously the first album, but then they also had a Japanese exclusive album. Uh, so do you count that? And then they uh, also had s several um, others. For example, do you count The Fall as an album? You know, that uh, album that David Hammond uh, basically he made it on his iPad. Do you count that? In it, um, this has not folded right, I don't think. I don't know how you fold. It must go, because that's uh, just the way it is, isn't it? I don't know. How do you fold this? Can't be that way now. Oh, wait, 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 wait. So I go like this. Ah! Okay. Got it. That was more complicated than it needed to be. But yeah, do you count uh, The Fall as a full Gorillaz album? As a proper one? Um, yeah. So it's always a bit confusing when you ask, you know, how many albums of Gorillaz are? Well, that's when it gets fucking confusing. It's just like, do you count this? Do you not? Um, yeah. But uh, the disc looks perfectly clean, but let's put it in just to see if it works. I have no doubt in my mind that it will, because it looks mm, perfectly fine. It has a slight scratch on it, but it should, it, uh, it'll be fine. You would work for me, wouldn't you? Wouldn't you, Gorilla's album? You would work for me. Yeah. Uh, la, 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 la. Oh, yes. I can just pause that before uh, YouTube has a field day and just copyright claims the hell out of the video. Yeah, it seems to have loading. Will it get the track data? Something to think. I'll give that a minute. Anyway. Shakira. Um, laundry day. Laundry site. Laundry service. Oh, yes, it has got the. So let's rip that. Okay, so. Yay. Uh, in America, you, is it your washers or is it your tumble dryers that are top loaders, generally? With us, with ours, it's um, they're side loaders, which are actually better because you can fit more stuff in. I mean, I understand the appeal because uh, a top loader you don't have to bend down for, whereas a side loader, obviously, you do. But with a side loader, you can also watch uh, your washing go round and round and round and round if you want to do that. Eh. Okay, oh, another one of these. Lovely lovely. The CD itself. It is literally a washing machine there. Uh, yeah, it looks fine. Wait, oh, I thought it wasn't. Yeah, man, focus, there we go. Interesting, you can see the teeth on this one. I call them teeth. Uh, is a um, lot cheaper type of case. More standard, but uh, is you know, a cheaper type of case. Yeah, Shakira. What was the last thing Shakira did? Um, ah, she did a couple of songs for Zootopia. I think that was the last thing she did. 
because I haven't heard of her in ages doing anything. Um, yeah. Okay, so it has song lyrics. Though, yeah, they're not printed particularly well, actually. Um, just looking at them. Yeah, some of them are, some of them aren't. Never do light text on a light background like that. Just don't. I mean, I do appreciate having the song lyrics in there. In there, that is nice, but, um, yeah. Like, black on white, great. You know, uh, a darker blue on a, a dark, no, dark purple on a uh, light white, fine. English Dictionary, why is that there? I don't know. Yeah. But I've got no doubts that this one will uh, rip fine as well. And finally, I was this last one I was uh, on the fence about getting, but I thought I've got his other, I've got his other albums, uh, so fuck it, might as well. David Guetta, yeah, um, Wong Love. So this is, is this a two disc set or is this a single disc? No, I think it's a single disc. Okay. Now, David Guetta, ho ho ho. The annoying thing about David Guetta is he never releases one bloody version of his album. He always releases a new version about th about four to six months later, and then another version after that, and then another version after that. I've said this before, but, for example, uh, Nothing But The Beat, I think I had four versions. There was Nothing But The Beat, Nothing But The Beat uh, 2.0, Nothing But The Beat 2.1, and then Nothing But The Beat Ultimate. And on vinyl, they've only done the standard, uh, from what I can tell, they've only done the standard version of Nothing But The Beat. So I was just like, why? Cause I was think I was considering buying it, but then I thought, oh, I'm going to wait and see if they do an ultimate uh, version, the ultimate version that has more tracks on it. Because you know, Gorillas ripped, um, completely fine. So, yay, happy days on that. Uh, let's put Shakira in. Why is it not closing? There we go. So yeah, it's 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 annoying. I mean, when artists literally just release a thousand different versions, it's not so much a case now. Uh, but in the two thousands, particularly the early twenty tens, early to mid twenty tens, that was a really common thing of just releasing version after version of the same bloody album, just adding a few songs uh, to it. Ooh. Dogs that copyright claim, dog shit good. Come on. Ow. I can't get this bloody thing open. Also, just a word of warning, um, I cut my hand last night, just there, uh, I uh, pricked it, ow, I shouldn't have done that, with a uh, sharp knife because I was cutting an orange in half, and that's not the first time that's actually happened, but there we go, there we go, our one love, I should probably show you the track listing on the back, again, another one of these, great, and yes, it is single disc, disc looks uh, perfectly fine, Interesting to put the tracks on under there, but it is a nice uh, holster bit uh, for it that holds it less likely to a break. Okay, David Getter, uh, what's this one going to be filled with? Pictures of the David Getter, apparently in black and white, because you can never have a colour picture of David Getter. It, it always has to be in black and white. I see that, and there's a colour picture of David Getter. And this is completely blank. Are you supposed to write on this? I don't know. 
Mm -hmm. Yay. And yeah, it's just get credits for each song. Because, you know, we all care about that. Sign that in. Was this, was this his first album? I can't remember. Oh well. Oh well. So that was that. That was um, all the things I got from uh, Poundland Outlet today. So, yay! So yeah, I was... I mean, these two I've seen in Poundlands before, but... Um, gorillas? No, I've never seen that in any of them. Oh yeah, that was uh, interesting, wasn't it? Now, I'm going to do something that I, I don't normally do, because this isn't technically an unboxing at all. Uh, this is something I found in, in uh, the loft. So first of all, I was uh, looking in the loft for some CDs, first of all, and um, I found some, and uh, this I was actually glad I found, because uh, I saw it in Poundland, several times I was tempted by it but yeah I decided not to but inside here the Crazy Frog's first two albums okay there we go I shit you know I wish I could find the DVD but these are both uh, the CDs uh, but yeah I found the Crazy Frog's first two albums that's not the big thing I'm going to show you anyway. Um, the verb, fourth. I can't really remember a single thing about this item. Item, uh, this album. But uh, I've been doing this for quite a while, just searching things in the loft and that. But um, normally I don't show you them because they're not that interesting. Um, yeah, that's just Black Eyed Peas and all uh, Now. This is interesting. It's obviously a DVD I've made, and I'm not sure what it is. It, it just says Volume 1, uh, Key 5 and 6, Studio 6. Don't know what that means. Uh, it could mean Key Stage 5 and 6, uh, as in at school, but I don't know. I don't even know if that disc even works. Um, and unfortunately, I can't put it in my disk drive at the minute because it is currently uh, ripping Paranorman. And why is it say rental copy? Because this is from uh, this is from uh, Blockbuster before they were closing. Basically, I didn't actually pay ten pound. I think I paid about six or seven pound for this when it when Blockbuster was closing. But anyway, on to the main thing I wanted to show you. And this is mine. Uh, I've had it since. Oh, I think it was about two or three, I think, but it's this. Yes, it is a Winnie the Pooh cassette recorder. Let's see if I can get this all in frame. Yes, I shit ye not. It is a... So let's take a look at this. It is very dusty. But yeah, there's Pooh. Uh, blowing a trumpet. That That is uh, fake. That's not a real speaker. Interestingly, you can rotate him slightly. Yeah. The same with Tigger at the back as well. He can rotate slightly. I don't know why. There's no real reason. You can barely move him at all. But yeah. His eyebrows weirdly. They almost on camera like that. It almost looks like goggles. Uh, but it is really well detailed, actually. Uh, yeah, quite nice. This section here. This. Because the thing is, this bit here and this extra bit here are kind of pointless. The cassette mechanism is all in here. But I do like the sort of like wood texture that is actually part of it. I was thinking of doing a review for this. However, uh, I think I'm just going to put it back in the loft. Because um, upon taking the battery cover off, uh, I realised it takes C-cell batteries. And I don't have any. I could go and get some. But, um, I'm not going to. I think I used to run this off, um, a 9-watt DC power adapter, but I have no idea. 
where well, there is, because I think I used a power adapter that my parents had for something else, and I don't even know if that power adapter still exists. I've got dust all over my hands. But the thing is, this has got a really crappy mono speaker, and no headphone jack. No way to get it out. Um, so, I can't actually see the playhead. Yeah, it's, I can't really see it properly, but I... I believe this is just a, a mono cassette player. It could be stereo, but uh, I think this is just completely mono. I do love the design, though, of the little uh, buttons being apples and the play button being a green apple. That's really nice with the grass on the top. And pumpkins for some reason, but yeah, that's that single mono speaker on the back is the only speaker, but you can run it off DC, which is, I think, what I generally dig because uh, batteries be expensive but yeah they, I mean it takes four C cell batteries four C cell batteries for this I mean it wasn't uncommon but yeah it's a bit irritating I've got Piglet here who's in a little barrel you can see a wire here what's the deal with that well if I pull him out Piglet here is uh, actually a microphone I'm trying to bounce it somewhere. Legs here. Well, yeah, if we uh, zoom in. Yeah, uh, you can see here the little microphone holes. It's Piglet and all his glory. And uh, basically, there's a little button here. And you have to press and hold it. That is the only way to record audio with it. You can't just set it. To record, you have to hold the button down and speaking to the microphone. That is the only way to record with this, which I did used to do, and I still have a couple of those recordings. Um, I'm currently busy on restoring them, but uh, basically, I used to record um, my own little Doc 2 adventures um, on this, and I think I might have found one of them. But there is a, I, I don't know why they have a button for that because the thing is this does not have a radio at all or anything like that the only thing you can record is your own voice I don't know what that noise was just then but yeah there's, all, there's no pause button either I just realised there's not there's no pause button or even yeah there's no pause button on this just fast forward rewind and stop and eject but anyway, um, I'm curious about something. I'll just give that a check. Yeah, I was right about that thing. There's no power button either. Uh, it does just automatically power on when you press play um, or record. It's not going to do that at the minute because there's no cassette. Also, uh, this it, and it was like this at the time. Very violently opening cassette mechanism. This is a really cheap thing mechanism cassette mechanism I mean it, uh, this would have been bought oh, I don't know 1999 2000 uh, possibly maybe 2001 uh, cause I've had it as long as I can remember I can't remember yeah but mm. there is I do like the volume knob here is a wheel listen to that though Yeah, that volume knob has seen better days. My hands are filthy. It's filthy, <laughs> this thing. Because uh, it's just literally... It, it's set in the loft uh, and not being used for about a decade. Because I did... I was actually using this thing um, all the way up until probably about 2008, 2009. Yeah. I was using it for that long. Uh, just recording stuff onto cassette with it Because you know I'm hit with the kick never mind this cassette comeback I was sticking with cassettes all the way back then I do love the handle as well being a little tree bark But uh, yeah, no radio on it because I, I initially thought oh, maybe this You know would do some but no this one's just fixed in place And a single mono speaker on the back as well. It's a very 
very very basic mechanism to be honest um and it even without um any batteries in or anything it does weigh quite a bit yeah it does weigh quite a bit this thing and it's not the cassette mechanism or anything it's just the sheer plastic and the sheer size of this thing because essentially this is like this is probably you know a really this is definitely a really cheap mechanism but i did use it for years and years but uh the sound of the recordings on it were pretty you know abysmal how much they were really bad uh but they do have a charm to them you know and i do i do like this thing which is why i've never gotten rid of it it will be going back in the loft just because well i have um absolutely no use for it What's about in the the sponge is still flying on there for the batteries. Ooh, police! Who are they looking for? It's not me, I promise. But yeah, it's it's just something's, you know, that is quite nice for a kid a kid to record their own cassettes. Because that's essentially what it is. It's not really a tape player. It's just a, it's really just a tape recorder. It's for recording. Uh, cassettes because I'm I don't think I really any owned any albums or anything back in the day I just just used to have uh, blank cassettes uh, which were usually my parents blank cassettes I just record over but yeah I, so by some miracle you know um, I have hung on to this because I did actually have a much nicer um, cassette radio it was uh, basically a, it was like a boombox, but it was you know long and wide. Uh, it was about, and it was a Panasonic, and I can't remember what the model number was or anything. I wouldn't have known. And I had, a, and it was uh, the one I kept at my nana's house, and um, it was you know just a regular device that uh, you could uh, record off the radio and play cassettes. But it also had a built-in mic as well. Which I also used to use, but unfortunately they gave that away. But since this was here at uh, my house, I have kept it um, and kept it safe. I actually found a, cas you know, a cassette in it um, ooh, a about a year ago, which is the one I digitised. Uh, but let me get you into something. So as we were saying before, you have to pull this button down when you want to record yourself speaking. The thing is, though, this is a, this is just utterly point. As I say, it's just utterly pointless. Why not just have it so when you press down the record, it just is automatically recording from the mic? Because that's what uh, the Panasonic uh, cassette radio that I had did. Is it just had a little microphone hole and it would uh, just uh, record? You could say it just to record through the mic. Yeah, I mean, I could technically modify this if I wanted to. I could, you know take out the out the mic put in an input uh, replace the speaker on it and give it an output headphone out if I wanted to I could modify this if I want if I really wanted to, to make it better and just keep the retro outside look but I don't want to because well it's not made for that it's just a f I, I like it as a fun little thing I'd be curious to see how many of these are there um, skilling existence, and you know what, um, fuck it, let's try eBay right now, so, yeah, Winnie the Pooh cassette player, oh, I, okay, there's one on eBay, and it's not from the UK, it's from the United States, So there's one in the US. Can we focus? There we go. But yeah, they want forty pounds. Uh, this is converted uh, plus twenty pound post gig because it's importing plus import duties. So yeah, forty quid for one of these. Oh no! Now there is a different one on eBay that you can get from the UK, which is different from my one. But it is a lot more basic. So it's this one here for 35, but 
you know, if we just have a look at that. That thing is a lot more basic. It does come with a Winnie the Pooh cassette, but yeah, it looks exactly the same. Uh, though it, hmm. But this what that one, if you notice, that one is uh, is very basic because this one can record, uh, whereas the the one this one on eBay it can only fast forward, play, and stop. Like I say, very basic mechanism. Yeah. Although, by the looks of it, it might be stereo. I can't tell, Coke. So, and also, oh, the piglet and the poo and the, and the tigger are removable from that one. Yeah. And that one, go yeah, so that one only takes. Does that one take the same? I can't tell. Oh, oh, e oh, it's not stereo, it is mono, uh, oh, so those must make other noises on their own, these things. Okay. Yeah. But that is interesting, um, I am glad, uh, to have... Mine still. No, I will not sell it. It is in remarkably good condition, actually, though. Seeing it's something I used relentlessly as a child, I did take care of it, actually. It's perfectly fine. So, yeah, happy with that. Something weird just happened there. For some reason, um, my SD card decided to have a bit of a field day, so I've only just ripped out in the package so I don't know what's in it so yeah let's uh, continue shall we so what's in the package it's a blu-ray it's the whole yay I actually already have this on a DVD but um, I saw it on eBay for £1.88 with free delivery and I thought well since Halloween's coming up and I haven't seen this film in a good few years. Yeah, why not? Um, I, it was the first film I actually saw when I was actually 12. So I te it was the first, you know, 12 I could have seen on my own, but I didn't. I remember I did see it in 3D. And I remember the only thing 3D gimmicky effects uh, was uh, nails that were thrown down the hole. Yeah. I also remember um, I brought in... Oh, there's an ambulance going by. Um, I also remember bringing in the DVD uh, at school for... Well, at the end of term, uh, basically. And uh, there were these people who said, Oh, I've watched 18s and, and everything, and oh, it won't be scary. And they were... The girls in the classroom who said this, it was... Yeah, uh, the boys didn't see it say anything they frankly didn't care but the girls literally said all these things and then they were screaming and this is only a bloody 12 but personally I uh, really like this film and it's from the director of Gremlins so yeah and what's the plot for this film well basically there's a hole and if you look into the hole then your worst fear comes true it comes to life yeah for example, this blonde kid's greatest fear is this uh, creepy clown doll thing. I don't know how that makes sense. There's also a little bit of damage there, but how does that make sense? I don't know, because to be honest, and he never sees a clown doll before him, but yeah, clown doll just appears. I don't know, he's afraid of clowns, but whatever. The other two... Well, not kids. The other two teenagers' fears are based on more that on uh, what happened earlier on in their lives. Yeah, the Blu-ray looks uh, perfectly clean. Oh, look! There's the camera sitting on my laptop. So yeah, this uh, should obviously rip no problem whatsoever. So yeah. 
I really wish though, um, and this goes for DVDs, Blu-rays and whatever, where they put the ratings, it's like, oh look, four scars, four scars, four scars, and then director of Gremlins, it's like, uh Kind of ruins it uh, a bit, and I don't know why they use this text, you know, because it's essentially, you know, a 12 rated uh, horror film. Obviously, you know, not as nowhere near as horrific as others, but um, this text really does, doesn't suit the film whatsoever, so yeah, a bit weird on um, that front, but. Hey, for one pound eighty-eight, can't can't complain really much about this, and it does include the same special features that the DVD included, which was a making of documentary. In fact, on my first channel, my main channel, the Six Sec channel, I actually reviewed the DVD when it came out. I actually did a review of the DVD. Yeah, I actually forgot about that. I actually did review the DVD. So, yeah, but. There's not a lot. I mean, there's a making of, which is pretty short. Interviews with Carson Crew again, pretty short. And then behind the scenes, again, incredibly short. So, not a loss on the disc. Um, oh, shove that down a bit. There we go. There we go. But, yeah, it's a nice. It's a good film, and I enjoy it, so. Yeah, I don't know what else to say, but check it out <laughs> if you can hear a fan going off that's because uh, my laptop has a button on it uh, that basically boosts the fangs up to maximum and I use it um, whenever I'm rendering a video or whenever I'm converting a blu-ray to an mp4 using hangbrake just because it keeps the laptop running cool so I can do other things on it so that's what that noise is. Anyway, enough explanations. Um, so, the again, I think I'm going to do something similar to what I did with the Winnie the Pooh. Except play and uh, show you a couple of things. Um, yeah, are from my childhood. Um, that I used, you know, pretty extensively. So, I'll start with the less exciting one. The first one. And I, these weren't in the loft, I literally just um, found them when I was doing a clear out of my room. So the first one is this, and I remember, ignore this bit here, the faceplate uh, has actually fallen off, and it will not stay on anymore, it's literally just, and the faceplate for this thing is just held on with double sided tape, but basically, it's obviously a CD radio that had a um, sort of turquoise coloured uh, faceplate. That was held on with uh, double-sided tape. A lot of you, a lot of you are probably going, ah, I remember these because a lot of people had these. Um, this was uh, basically my uh, sort of mini CD boombox because this thing was. Uh, I remember getting this actually when I was uh, seven or eight uh, from Asda for eleven pound because basically. Um, I uh, had a um, mini hi-fi, a, a uh, bookshelf hi-fi, that's what they call it. I had a bush bookshelf hi-fi, unfortunately um, that broke. And um, basically I, want, I wanted something that was more portable anyway, so basically uh, I spotted this in Asuka and uh, asked my dad to get me it. So actually, yeah, that's the colour, this colour here. That's what the faceplate was here that was held on with double sided tape, so ignore the silver bit around the here. But yeah, all it is is just a basic CD radio. I, I never ever used the radio on it, I just used it as a CD player. It's a lot, it's very beat up because, um, for example, um, whenever my dad would ask me to help uh, mow the lawn, would take this out um, basically. And if we unclip it, has a nice uh, slow mechanism there. You can see it's very dusky inside, it hasn't been used in ages. Um, I think it still works. I know the radio on it definitely does work because that's how I found it recently. Because Yeah, but you can see things are just uh, 
rubbing off it. And there were several versions of this. In fact, there's this mould was made for various different companies. In fact, one of them put a cassette mechanism here. And you see, there's actually a line uh, around the back here. Slight little line just around here of uh, where some inputs, I believe, were. But they're not in this mould. Scan an AC, headphone out events and as typical on the bottom you're putting far too many bloody C cell batteries uh, yeah six C cell batteries to power this I have never to this day used this um, I always just had it plugged in and um, just used extension cords when I needed it to be longer interesting yeah the volume it's got a nice smooth movement to it it's got a nice dampened Movements, uh, yeah. I mean, did it sound great? It sounded a little bit thin, to be honest, but it was just something I used it. And um, something I did remove actually was um, the aerial. I actually did remove that because it was just broken off and just a little stub of it sticking out, so I just decided to remove it just because of a sharp edge. But yeah, that's something um, I had in the dings. So did a lot of people. I remember there was a lot of builders who would literally have this exact CD player. It was available in multiple colours, but yeah. That's just something I had and um, used extensively back in the day. But anyway, that's the less interesting one, two things. Also, let me know if you like seeing this thing where I show you some things I've had in the past that I no longer use. This thing, now, this thing I did use but uh, you know not to the extent that I've used this next thing for oh and it's big it's heavy it's got a vent it's a DVD player made by Philips but not just any DVD player yes this is a recordable DVD player yeah I'm going to put it on the next side this is a recordable DVD player and uh, I got got this uh, because at the time, uh, basically, VHS was on its way out in the early 2000s anyway. And basically, I wanted to go from recording TV th on uh, my VCR, and I wanted to record on DVD. So for Christmas that year... Actually, no, it wasn't Christmas. It was my birthday. I asked for a recordable DVD player, and... To this day, I am the only person I know who had a recordable DV player and also used it to record television as well. But I'll get on to that in a minute. For the first few years, though, I couldn't use it. Yeah, I um, couldn't figure out how to use it, unfortunately. And the reason being is that... Uh, the, the way it records, it records in a, you have to press function menu and then select the type of disc manually on this one at least you did once I figured that out after having this player for about two or three I think I had it for two or three years and without able to record once I figured that out I was using it non-stop and I was using this uh, recordable DVD player all the way up until let's see well to put it into perspective, I started using it in late 2008, is when I started using it. And uh, bearing in mind, um, I think we had a Sky Plus box by that point, I can't remember. I can't remember when we did get a Sky Plus box, but I preferred recording things to DVD because... Well, basically, if you record something to this, it just records to a standard blank DVD that are still readily available. But the good thing is, once you record something to this, you can then watch it on any DVD player. And I do mean any DVD player. It will just play out. So that was good. It was, you know, nice and portable. Unfortunately, recordable discs, um, depending on what condition they're in, they can deteriorate. 
most of the recordable DVDs that I've recorded onto unfortunately no longer work just because um, they've got far too much disc rot on them because basically uh, they they were mostly you know a lot of them were just kept in the loft uh, after a while but anyway yeah uh, Scott using this you know really 2009 onwards is when I really got into using this I still uh, though used my uh, VCR my video machine all the way up until 2011 and the reason was is because back then uh, recordable DVDs blank discs were still you know fairly expensive so basically when I ran out I just um, got VHS's because uh, they were incredibly cheap I'd always have to ask for the discs uh, for either birthday or Christmas and I generally get a pack of either 25 fi or uh, 50 so yeah uh, something uh, also this is entirely analog it does not have a digital tuner in it it is just a standard analog tuner and to show you on the back the uh, connection port so uh, the power cable is just uh, wired in to here let's focus on that there we go so you can't remove the power cord uh, so we've got coax out never ever used that but it does have uh, coax out it doesn't have optical out though which is interesting I've never used coax out uh, though I do use optical you then also got um, audio out as well uh, was that audio in yeah that okay to get that all out okay so you basically got uh, your composites out or S video out and here you've got SCART in and out so basically SCART uh, in is actually uh, where you connect it up to your television and SCART 2 is basically to connect say if you had uh, another device like a VCR you could daisy chain it up that's something I miss uh, that you didn't you don't get with HDMI with with uh, SCART you could daisy chain uh, your connector car remember at the time my TV only had one SCART port connector on the back of it but that didn't matter because every single device I had had two SCART ports on it so I could just daisy chain them out um, aerial in and aerial out to pass through to the TV now obviously we had uh, the digital switch over in 2012 was it 2012 and also on here under the flap you've got uh, composite in as well as well as a DV in as well no idea what that's for I've never used it I should also mention I don't know where the remote is it will I've got a feeling it's fallen down the back of the wardrobe Personally, I think that's why I stopped using it for one of the reasons I stopped using it for a while. But the uh, the thing is, is that, and I'm going to admit this, for years I actually used this to record off Sky. Yes, you see, I um, in 2009 I got Sky in my bedroom. Yeah. And because in the living room we got Sky Plus, so my dad said, look, you can have Sky in your bedroom. So that was great. And uh, I still wanted the ability to record. Ah, how did I do it? Well, basically, since this was an original Sky box, it went through the, the input on the back of here. So, all the, and the good thing is, since it was analog, it didn't uh, care where the source was coming from so I could record to DVD from Sky yeah uh, to those who are you know not from the UK Sky is uh, basically a uh, TV service where you pay for 
the bo box six basically a satellite receiver with sat and you pay for the satellite channels so basically I was able to record to Sky onto DVD now many other people have done this before as well uh, but basically that was my workaround and I, I was doing that for years I was doing it Ooh, I can't remember how long I did it for um, I think I did it all the way up until uh, hmm I don't know it would I think it would have been until I got Sky Plus HD box I think it was up until then but uh, you know this could still technically be used I do have another recordable DVD player at uh, my nana's house which was which is uh, a Panasonic which does have a digital tuner in it uh, so that can record to DVD at my granny's house I actually bought her a uh, Sony recordable DVD player with a digital tuner um, unfortunately it will only let you record to uh, analog TV which obviously there isn't any anymore obviously again there's the way around it but yeah so yeah it's just something I missed that say uh, you know we can't be archiving stuff anymore because I was hoping that they'd bring out a uh, recordable blu-ray player obviously that was never the case and it's obvious why because then you would be making perfect copy recordings of broadcasts and for a while I was true they were over scarks but it w but unlike in the US we have RGB scarks so yeah I was basically making perfect recordings of a uh, at least standard definition television well sort of you see to get the most out of the discs you could also have a quality selector and I always put it the quality selector at the bottom to those who know me that may be a shock and horror but again it's to do with the discs if I had the quality set to its absolute highest a standard 4.7 gigabyte disc would only record for an hour yeah no that was at high quality at standard quality it would uh, be two hours which okay uh, fine uh, then for long play it would extend that to four hours getting better but then for super long play you get six hours of record time out of a disc and obviously since the discs at the time you know were expensive I mean they probably they probably they weren't really expensive expensive but uh, to you know a kid uh, they were uh, comparatively so basically yeah I had to make the discs last as long as possible and for a long time I was watching it on a CRT television anyway so on a CRT television uh, the super long play I couldn't actually tell the difference so that's why uh, they were recorded do doing it that way, yeah. Now, I ha I still have quite a lot of these discs, actually. Let's have a look at them. Yeah, um, yeah they're on a spindle. And I don't want to knock everything over. Right, so... There are a lot of discs here, and they're just mixed in. Um, oh, there's a PlayStation 1 game. Previous the beginning. So I have no, So this one is very much rotted. Um, Max, so some of the problem is a lot of these. I um, a lot of them I did right on, and some of them I've just had to throw away because, well, they don't work. Ah. Wait, I found a prime example of a one. Doctor Who, the Doctor, the Widow and the Wardrobe. I'm curious whether this still plays, actually. Um, and as far as I can tell, I think that's the only thing recorded on there. Um, I might have recorded the confidential, I don't know. 
but yeah that 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 is a recording um of that and let's just see if it works it might might not to be honest i don't even know if i ever watched that back to be honest uh, it's having a think Yeah, I, d I don't think it's going to play, to be honest. Uh, most of these don't. Is there anything on this Sony one? You can see there, though, they are. this one does have disc rot uh, on it. Come on. Alright. I mean, there's no point on it anyway. I am... Um, I do have... I do have... Uh, the complete sixth series on DVD, not Blu ray. Um, hmm, that one is a full disc. I can tell when they were recorded as well just because of the types of discs. The Sony ones, uh, they're earlier. The Maxell ones would have been later on. And. Okay, there's nothing on that disc. Or at least it can't see anything on the disc, so there's nothing on that one. Let's try this one. Let's just literally just go from disc to disc, seeing if I can find anything. Okay, here's a classic. Sky. Volumes 13 and 14. My god, what the fuck is going on with this disc? I have no idea what the hell I was doing or thinking, but yeah, there's there's definitely some stuff on that disc. It, it's definitely a disc. Um, and again, this one will not play it. I don't. I doubt any of these actually work, uh, to be honest, because the way that they're recorded as well. Um, for example, uh, in more modern, in later players, you would finalise the disc before, um, you know, being able to play it in other players. With the Panasonic one I've got there, you didn't have to finalise the disc. Uh, in fact, I don't think you could finalise the disc. Oh, there's an Asga Blank CD. That's interesting. Another Asga Blank CD. I have no idea whether they work or not. Garfield Gets Real. Piglet's big movie, I remember that. I remember uh, being saddened by the ending. So yeah, he is not recognising that disc whatsoever. At all, he doesn't like the disc. So give it to me back. It's a shame because... Um, it's weird because these recordings, you know, weren't made were made about a decade ago ish some of them yeah I've got ones that are on VHS that are even older um, and they still work perfectly fine so yeah that was a problem with it no one ever really bought into it not for that reason but simply because uh, people were just used to DVRs and um, it's annoying that you know there isn't really a portable format anymore for archiving media although then again it's less necessary. I mean, there are various other ways. Oh, I'm dropping discs. Tons and tons of discs. Uh, I think the Sony ones have got a, a better chance of working. Simply because they generally were better made. Um, oh, here's another one. Doctor Who Series 6. I've just put Doc 2, yeah, it's Doc 2 Series 6, Episodes 8 to 12. That's what that one is. And, oh, it's trying, it's desperately trying. Let's open up VLC and see if it, it'll have a go. What? I don't think it will, I don't think it'll work. Because uh, not even Windows will bloody recognise it. 
Yeah. I'm literally just, I realise right now I'm just going from disc to disc and I'm also looking to see if there's any actual content on the discs. Okay, what's this one got? This one's got something on it. Give me the disc. Give me the disc back. Okay, so this one, no go. I literally just knocked all those discs over. Oh! I was looking for that. It's a SpongeBob Christmas. This is the most recent SpongeBob DVD I, I have ever gotten. Okay, rather than having these on my knees, let's put them down. That would make more sense. Put them down. Here's another one. Another Sky DVD. Bloody hell. Yeah. Um. Oh! Oh! Will this one actually work? Um, hmm. Because it has recognised that there's something on the disc. No. Can't be open. Okay. It has recognised that there's something on the disc, though. Oh. 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 This is something else. Wow. Okay. Ah, okay. What is on this disc? Oh, I know what this disc is. This is, uh, I should probably write what this is on this one, but this is Ubuntu. Actually, you know what? I will. So here we go. I'm going to write on the disc. Uh, Ubuntu starts up disk. So yeah, this is when I was installing Ubuntu on an old PC, an old laptop. Um, yeah. Looks. Ooh. So it did recognise that one. So. Generally, if it's a file, if it's files stored on the disk, on a blank disk, then it seems to recognise them perfectly fine. But if it's something else, then it's going to have a hard time. Alright, so I've gone through them. Let's just go through these DVDs. Uh, oh, look, they've got two DVD files. Remember them? blank disc uh, with barely anything on it so I reckon that'll be some files I was actually using these at one point instead of using USB flash drives because again these were cheaper than buying looks like that's a blank disc I think ooh verbatim remember these discs and these ones would actually give you information so that actually does have some stuff on it Oh, oh, okay. This one I would this one I would like to work. For some reason I called everything I recorded on CBBC. CBBC scars. I'm hoping this has some episodes of Basil Brush on it. I've no idea what the fuck I've drawn right here, but this has definite, definite rot on it. I wondered if I if I cleaned these discs, would they work? some of them are a bit dusty but the problem is is that they just when you record on them they do just deteriorate over time so what I'll do is I'll put some of these to the side I'll give them a good clean and see if they work um, they're probably not though again most of them were just kept on this uh, spindle
actually this one you can see the disc rocks there, the clearest actually if I the camera's having a hard time focusing but there is actual disc rocks on this one easily uh, visual and just see it there around the edges so yeah that's what disc rock looks like it didn't help I kept them on the windowsill either oh this one had a lot on this one had a lot of recordings on it uh, this one nothing I don't think I'm just looking through these, uh, I think I've gotten to that, whoa! So this disc was clearly at the top. Look at that. Look at that Sony disc. Now look at that Sony disc. This one was clearly at the top of the pile for a long time. Yeah, I don't know what half of these are. Um, let's get the last ones out. Let's see what there is. I always put the bottom disc on the other way around just so... Well, it doesn't stretch. Uh, nothing on that one. Nothing on that one. Yeah, that, that must have been the last few discs that I just didn't bloody use. So what I'll do is um, I will go off and actually uh, clean these discs. I've literally got another spindle full back. I can't be asked to go through it. Anyway, this gone on this went on a lot longer than initially expected. Um I thought I was only gonna speak talk to you for ten minutes of sp been speaking for half an hour. This one's a different Sony disc, it must be a laser one. Also, speaking of discs, these are all my blank discs now. Um, these are blank uh, DVD and Blu-ray discs. I think that was the thing. I didn't keep the lids for these um, initially. Uh, what I used to do is put the lids upside down and put more discs in them. Because... A lot of discs came in these nice spindles, but the cheaper ones, like the Maxell ones, were just wrapped in cellophane. And uh, nothing else. So basically I kept the lids off them and used them as storage. Space it was, but uh, yeah, this disc doesn't want to work. Um, I don't think any of these will work, uh, if I'm quite honest. But yeah, so that was them. Uh, this is going to be going back in the loft, and also I noticed this has gotten a little bit rusty around there. Yeah. Also, the fact it was so large and so wide, this this entire front section just stuck out on my shelf. To put this into perspective, um, I'm literally just grabbing a random PS2 game I have. Oh look, it's Scooby Doo. Look at that! It's huge! And it is really bloody heavy. Also, all the rubber feet are. Well, they weren't rubber, they were actually foam feet uh, disintegrated. Yeah. I don't believe there's a disc in there, though I will check before I go in the loft and put it in. If there is a disc, I'll let you know, and if there's any updates on this, I'll let you know. So yeah, I'll let you know. Just to give you a really, really quick update on um, what you literally just saw. So I did clean the disc, and unfortunately, put in the laptop and still won't work. Uh, try it on PS3 and PS4, still won't work. Um, uh, problem is, is basically it's not seeing anything on the disc, so it just thinks it's a blank disc. 
So it's not the fact that there's uh, scratches in that. If there was scratches, then yeah, it would read, read, but it would show up error, but it's just showing up as nothing's on the disc. I'm getting a battery flashing warning on this. Also, just to quickly show you, on the recordable DVD player, it's been stuck in startup, so I've no idea what's on the disc, and it will not finish until it's on startup. I'm sure it'll probably maybe get there eventually. I don't know, but yeah, I can't open the tree. I could get, yeah. um, but I don't think there's anything in there anyway. Actually, can I f can I force this open? I feel like I'm just taking <laughs> I could take it apart, but I don't think there's a disc in there anyway. I think I would have taken it out long ago, but yeah, that's that, I guess. Hello again. So, last night, um, I did actually uh, watch this again. I guess realize it's there we go, I zoomed a bit in. I did watch this again uh, after ripping it, and um, yeah, it's. Uh, it is uh, a fun little time, to be honest. It, it very much reminds me of uh, pretty much a classic, so a horror story, but for kids, so for, yeah, pretty much uh, for, you know, the, I'd say the 9 to 12 year old uh, bracket. Yeah. But uh, pretty good. Unfortunately, um, I can't remember the name of the actor who plays this guy, the main character. But, uh,. He's good at playing a, you know, sort of douchebag teenager, where he's just like, oh, not bothered, not bothered about anything, kind of character. But then, he's like that throughout the entire film. He never changes his tone of voice, so it's hard to take him seriously during later scenes. It almost becomes comedic by the end. Uh, the best actor in it is actually... Um, the kid, he was actually really good and he can cry on cue, so well done to him. Anyway, there's a package from Muzak Magpie. Magpie! It's two CDs. So the first one is James Blunt. All, all the Lost Souls. Yeah. I remember when this came out, I was planning to get it, but I never did. However, this one is uh, a two-disc version. Also, again, this seems like it has gotten wet at some point because, well, the booklet is a bit crinkly and the back is a bit crinkly. Same thing in here. Uh, oh, yes, we get song lyrics and a nice, lovely skull. Amazing. Song lyrics, always appreciate that, having uh, the lyrics in there. And, yeah, it looks alright. Yay. Interestingly, the only James Blunt album to be released on vinyl is uh, The Afterlove. That's the only one that's ever gotten a release on vinyl. So it would be nice if uh, they release these other albums on it. So anyway, um, yeah, this is a two-disc set. So disc one is just a CD. Yeah, it's a little bit eh, but it looks um, perfectly fine to be honest. It should work. Not in the absolute best condition. Well, hey, as long as it works, it works. And uh, let's actually put it in. Yeah, let's show it on camera this time. Let's put it in the Blu-ray drive. This is an HP Blu-ray drive. And there's also the DVD as well. Oh, and it does actually open this way. Yeah, um... Come on. Come on, you know there's a disc in there. You know there's a disc in there. Anyway, let's have a look at the DVD. Getting a little bit crinkled um well again some artwork which is obviously just it's made off of uh multiple different images of 
people. I have no idea who those people are. But hey, it's people. Ooh, is this CD gonna work? Oh yes, 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 it's thinking about it. There we go. Okay, so it seems to look... Again, only ten tracks on this album. Which is weird, uh... James Blunt's albums are normally pretty short, but anyway... The bonus DVD. I don't know if this was just, like, as a standard. Um, or whether all versions of the album had it. Ooh, there's a bit of dirt on it. Very, very fingerprinty. I don't know what's on here. Um, I can't remember what's on here. Uh... Possibly music videos or something. I'm not really sure. If it is, then great. That'd be nice to have. But I'm not, again, I'm not sure. But yeah. So this was on a two for three pound offer. What was the other album I got? Well, it's not really an album, it's a concert. But it's James Want. This was um, his first or one of his first concerts. The first and only one ever to have a an actual release, a physical release. James Blunt, Chasing Time, The Beglum uh, Seasons. I actually did have this CD, and I found the box for it in the loft. I have no idea where it is, but uh, yeah, basically, this has a CD and a DVD. In fact, uh, the main thing in it is the DVD. Oh God, I thought that was just part of the hour, but look. Oh, has literally come off. What the hell did this person put this player in? Yeah, wow. It's literally, the artwork's literally flaking, well, the artwork, uh, the label is oh, it's flaking off. The disc looks fine though, uh, yeah. Now the main reason uh, I used to watch this DVD as a kid, oh, look, it's all over. It has flaked off all over in there. Yeah. The main reason I had this DVD as a kid is because it uh, had extras, including high both versions, it had two versions of High. It had the original, you know, video and then it had a an alternate music video for it, including the making ofs. It has Wise Men, music video and making of, um You're Beautiful, that bloody song, video and making of, Goodbye My Lover, making music video and making of being blunt a documentary about james blunt an interview with james blunt and a photo gallery all on the dvd and uh what's on the cd the cd is literally just uh the concert just the audio from it uh all the tracks and that so that's what the cd is the dvd is obviously the concerts but you know you can see it And there's a thing there. But yeah, and uh, a lot of people might be one who are younger or wondering, you know, why was this really a thing back then? Well, you got to remember, before you YouTube, because uh, this came out in 2005, this album, YouTube had only just launched, but uh, basically, you know, there was no real way to watch music videos whenever you wanted. You, there was really only two main ways. You could either watch them on the music channel, uh, if, but then that wasn't really good because they normally would cut the songs short. I remember they always cut them short um, when they played them on TV. Don't tend to do that now, but they did back in the day. So yeah, they'd always cut the music video short. Doesn't want to stay in. Or uh, you could, by this point, you could buy them on iTunes, but they weren't. You know, that wasn't particularly cheap. I think they were £1.39 each for the music videos, which wasn't great. Uh, I remember the the only one uh, we ever bought from iTunes was Red Hot Chili Peppers. 
Um, what was it? What one did we get? Uh, I'm trying to think. I am trying to think. This is me thinking. Red Hot Chili Peppers, Danny California. Yeah, that was the only music video I ever had. And watching it on a teeny tiny um, iPod screen, that was not great. So yeah, I always preferred having it on... Oh, oh. Was it not meant to flip out? Was it meant to flip out this way? Oh. That's why it wasn't. I pulled it off. Did I? Oh dear. Sorry, I wasn't meant to do that. Did I break it? Whoops. There we go, yeah. Um, this is actually just a flexible plastic here. Whereas the other ones, the other way where it flips the other way around is actually on a hinge. But it wasn't meant to flip that way around, uh, I just kind of broke it. Uh, yes, yeah, so let's pause that before uh, YouTube has my back. So yeah. Two for three pound. Uh, not bad. So that means now I basically have um, <coughs> these, essentially. Oh, it just says at the bottom there. Uh, Music Video Interactive. Plays in all standard DVD players and disc drives. I still don't know what the fuck the DVD in this is. But, uh, you know, I'll have a look. So, yeah, that was that. Nick Nat Paddywhack. Give a dog a bone. Yeah. I think, um... I think his first album is probably my favourite. I don't know. Yeah. Well, I decided to um, open up the Philips recordable DVD player because I tried turning it on and um, unfortunately it has an issue where it can no longer eject the drive. Um, it's probably due to the motors seizing up over time. Uh, it prob I probably could get this to, to work in that. I notice it's got this plastic guard around here, presumably to stop circuit some short circuiting. Yeah. But uh, I opened it up just to see if there was a disc in there and, well, as you can see, there clearly is not any disc in there. You can see the drive bay here. Ooh. You can also see there's uh, loads of dust in there. Although, to be honest, it's not that dusty, um, considering its age. But, uh, yeah, this thing also takes forever to boot up as well now. So, I'm debating whether even keeping this, or whether it should just be, you know, throw it thrown away. Um, I probably will keep it. I'll probably just stick it in the loft um, somewhere. But yeah, just having a look at the inside of it. It is interesting. Um, yeah. Ooh, inside. Inside. Um, the annoying thing is that it uses Torx head screws. Luckily, though, I do have a screwdriver uh, that is actually uh, the perfect size for it, yeah. So, that was lucky for that. Um, but, yeah, that's... That, there's no disc inside, so I'll probably screw this all back together. And then uh, just put it in the loft. It actually uh, has, like, a mini board here with a processor on it. Yeah. But you can see there, you know, unlike a lot of modern players, this actually uses all of the internal space. Because a lot of modern Blu-ray drives, most modern Blu-ray drives is literally just the disk drive and a teeny tiny control board. Which is basically just a, a converter that converts it to HDMI, so there's not a lot in modern uh, disk players, but... And these older ones, yeah, it's literally all filled out, so it literally does need to be the size that it is. Yeah, so that was a quick look in here. Okay, so, firstly, it's a bit of a story time. So, uh, I'm not going to take the elastic bangs off this case of it. 
irritating I thought back, but this is uh, the free Sean the Sheep Farmageddon uh, poster you got if you went to go see it at Odeon um, between the 18th and the 20th. Now, I went on the 19th and uh, got the free poster and uh, basically I got two of them, I got one for myself and one for my sister and uh, basically I did exactly this, you know, I got some elastic bangs since they were too big uh, for any frames, uh, I'm going to have a look to see if I can find a frame for it because it is quite large, it's basically just the generic movie poster uh, basically that you see where Sean's sort of float, floating, uh, hovering in the air being abducted kind of thing so you know, nothing special about the poster, and then you get these uh, colouring things on the back of it as well for kids, and I guess that's nice for them, uh, but basically you know, standard uh, scuff, but uh, I basically, I put this in a bag like this, and when we're about to leave, uh, basically I put these on, on top of all the shopping that uh, you know, we've gotten from, uh, I think, from Marxies. You know, this was on the top. And then my mum came, and I basically said to both my mum and dad, and I said, don't put anything on top of this. And what does my mum do two seconds later? Puts the heaviest bag on top of it, which crinkles it up, creases it, and basically bashes it to pieces. And she then says to me, oh, I wasn't listening. What did you want? And I'm literally so pissed off. But today, I went back to that same cinema. I uh, basically showed them my ticket and just said, you know, that, uh, can I have another one? And obviously, yes, of course I can. Because they worship me and love me. So, yeah, that's how I've got uh, one of these. And basically, it's going to scale like this uh, until I can get a frame for it. So, yeah, so because of that, I did have to buy... Some elastic bands. Yeah, I got these from uh, One Below, which is basically uh, Poundland, not Poundland, Pound World. Yeah, with a new name. It's because it's basically where all, where well, not all, but where most of the Poundlands used to be. Now, One Below shops are opening, which are basically Pound Worlds, but with a new name because they're selling the exact same stock. Uh, as Pound World was, so yeah, so got some elastic bangs from there. Oh, <coughs> lovely and multicoloured. Uh, something else you got for free were these sticker sets, and uh, I accidentally. Uh, oh my god, I picked up more than I thought. Uh, I picked up. Apparently, I've picked up four. Yeah, I didn't realise this. Um, but I initially was just going to pick up one for myself and one for my sister. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I literally was just on the way out and um, just grabbed them. I, I thought there was two there, but uh, yeah, there's four. And I've already given my sister one, so I must have grabbed five. So let's have a look at the skicker sex. Uh, so, we've got Sean. We've got scientist people in hazardous suits. Forgot dog's name. Spaceship. Lulu or Lala or whatever the fuck. Evil woman. Logo. A frog. Robot, that is a reference to Cooker from uh, Wilson Gromick's uh, Grand Day Out. Yeah. So, you know, I'm just going to keep these sealed like this and, uh, yeah. Because to be honest, I knew I was going to get a sticker pad for free. Because I knew they were giving their mouse back. So I didn't know they were doing posters as well. I just found that elastic band off the floor the other day. But anyway, the fun does not end there. If I grab this out of my <laughs> coat pocket. I went to the Poundland today as well. I bought this, it is the 20th by the way of um, October so yeah this is uh, Avril Lavigne the best goddamn thing which has uh, a single uh, girlfriend 
which is the only single I really remember from this album because uh, I never owned it until now. Uh, come on, it's, it's their way to own this. Apologies for my voice. Um, basically, I am not um, full of cold at the minute, not particularly very well. I probably said this more than once, but basically, if my voice is sounding different from normal, that is why. God, this is so hard. Best goddamn thing is too goddamn difficult to get open. Um. Uh, I don't want to get my. I'm gonna have to get my knife out for this. Okay now. Alright, there we go. Don't wanna scratch the case. Put that back away. So yeah, here it is. Lovely jubbly. Twelve tracks, okay. Ooh, I just noticed that is cracks. I did not notice that. That is cracks there. And is literally, literally just hanging off. Okay. Well, there's the CD itself, and uh, looks like it should work uh, no problem. I'm just going to put these there. Yeah, the clunks and clicks of it uh, wearing around. So let's see if this CD will be fine. Just seem to have uh, loaded up, and Windows Media Player is crashing. All right, um, yeah, it's recognised the album, so you know, time to rip. Anyway, let's have a look at El Booklet. Which let's put this. Come on, there we go. Get it out. There we go, so... Yeah, it does have track lyrics. That's nice. Uh, unfortunately, they're very difficult to read. A, because they're so small, but also they don't... You know, the choice of colour, like a, a dark sort of hot pink colour on a with black text, uh, not exactly the best colour of choice for this. Okay, if you really want to read the lyrics, you can just Google it. So, you know, it's nice when they put a bit of effort in. Because uh, I used to like uh, looking through these little booklets uh, when I was listening to CDs back in the day. Whereas now, if I'm playing a record, I'll either watch it spin, or I'll look at the artwork. Or I'll do something on my phone. Don't know, it depends. And then there's a load of stuff written, and I can't be asked to read it. Yeah, lovely, lovely, just a, just a load of stuff on there. Well, isn't that all, you know, uh, great and hunky-dory? Um, something I'm going to mention is uh, I found a uh, certain DVD the, the other day and uh, I, I've since ripped it. Where is, where is it? I put it in my 
DVD file. Look! Expasal brush extravaganza. Yeah, I found this disc recently. That was good. BBC, why haven't you released the Basil Brush show? Seriously, why? Because at the moment, not all the episodes uh, are available everywhere. But you see, the ones that are on YouTube are generally either ones that have been ripped from a DVD or they're VHS recordings, basically. Because, uh, you know, you've put other shows from that era, like you've put, uh, I know my sister is watching the story of Tracy Beaker, so uh, can you please put uh, the Basil Bush show on there? That would be great. Thanks very much for that one. Hmm. Yeah. But anyway, this uh, seems to have uh, been ripping uh, perfectly fine. So that is all very, very good and hunky dory. And it's 40 minute album. So, yeah, sort of standardish length. So, happy days for that. Nick Nap Paddywhack. Make sure you give your dogs plenty of bones. And it's actually finished gripping <laughs> now. Um, some of you may wonder, what do I do with the CDs afterwards? Uh, basically, they generally, they'll, they'll either go to my granny's house and just keep them there. Although at the moment, what I've been doing is, um, I've just been putting them in the loft. Uh, to be honest, because, you know, I don't actually listen to the physical discs, I just listen to the ripped Versions generally it's the same with my DVDs and Blu-rays as well, so yeah, that's what I do with that. Okay, so this one's going to be a little bit different. This isn't actually going to be an unboxing of uh, any type. So, um, if you watch my other one, well, my other YouTube channel, Six Sec Reviews, other scuff, you'll know on that one, I also have an item to unbox series where I basically just um, unbox while well, basically anything that isn't Doctor Who that I get in the post now. One of the things I showed off was this. This is a Winnie the Pooh cassette recorder, which basically the only way to record to it is using this piglet microphone. There's no radio, nothing else. It can only play tapes and uh, record using the microphone with a single mono speaker on the back. No output, so no headphone jack, no inputs either. You can run it though off a 9 volt DC power in, uh, if you have one, or off batteries. Now, at the time, in that video, I did not have any C cell batteries. This is what this uh, TX6TX4 C cell batteries. Fortunately, I now have some, so what I can do is take off this back panel. And also, these are actually quite rare now, apparently. Uh, there's only one listing of it uh, actually on eBay, and I think it's for about 50 60 pound, including the post gigs, and that's uh, getting it from the US. Let's put them over there. I can't. Where, what did I do with those C cell batteries? Oh, look, there they are. I'm knocking everything off, I'm good at that. So, yeah, I thought I'd play one of the Got 2 cassettes in here. There we go. Uh, come on. Now, it should still work, um, I'm hoping. Let's uh, just put the battery door back on just so. I don't lose the bloody thing. Right, now let's grab a cassette. Um, now we'll leave that one for Lisa. Let's use this one. So this is Fantastic Songs, John Pertwee, one, one of his last ever interviews. So. Let's play it. This is a very, very cheap mechanism. I mean, for example, 
Look at that, very violent door. But anyway, let's make sure the volume is up and let's have a listen. Oh, it is working. I can't hear anything. Is the speaker dead? That is a possibility. Um, put this to the side. Let's try. I don't think these cassettes were rewound. Oh no, they were, okay. Yeah, is the speaker dead? So all the functions and that are working on it, it is running by the tape. All I can hear is the tape whirring. No, why? Why do you no longer work, Winnie the Pooh? Why do you no longer work? That's disappointing, that. Um, I was hoping that was going to be working. Though inevitably it is not. That is sad, that. Could it be fixed? Yeah, probably, but will I fix it? No. Yeah, so... That's that, and it's... Just not working. That's a shame. How do you like this angle? Come on, focus. Okay, so we've got Child's Play. This is the 2019 remake of the original, which basically, um, yeah, we've got Mark Hamill voicing a robotic Chucky. Now, I was actually going to see this at the cinema. Unfortunately, this... Uh, didn't really have much of a UK release date, literally. Most cinemas were only showing it for maybe one or two nights. In fact, the day I saw Toy Story 4, which was uh, only a day after it came out, I believe, in the UK, was the final day they were showing Child's Play at that cinema. And it had only come out the day beforehand, so it only came out for two days, but yeah. This is 12.99. Um, I got from HMV. No steelbook option or anything, just literally this. Well, it does come with a slipcase. Well, that's nice. And it does, even on the box, it tells you that, hey, remember it? Yeah, this is uh, from the producers of it. So yeah, um, at the di at the time we're recording, which is the 21st of October, this is just being released. So, hooray. So yeah, basically uh, my dad uh, bought this for me since uh, basically he was uh, unable to take me and my brother to go see it. So yeah. I got the Blu-ray, so... I have no idea whether this is any good or not. Apparently it is. Interestingly though, uh, there's only the Blu-ray and the DVD available. No 4K Blu-ray, just these. Fuck, is this? Um, 
Special features, audio commentary by the director, the making of Child's Play, bidding Child's Plays, Chucky, to bringing Chucky to life. Okay, this is interesting. Soundtrack trailer. Okay. Lee Castle, Clementine, and uh, a photo gallery. Yay. So, from what I can gather, this is basically a mixture between um, it and child play with a robot instead of, you know, possessed doll. Yeah, uh, interesting. But obviously, uh, I will be watching this, but first, I will be ripping it. So, yay for that, I guess. Happy days to have this. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what else to say then. Yay! Um, I thought I'd quickly just quickly just give my thoughts on their child's play because I did watch it last night. Um, which it t today is the day after its um, physical. DVD and Blu-ray release. Again, no 4K um, option, at least not as of yet. Um, if it is in the US, then please let me know, but there isn't in the UK. I have no idea why, but yeah, so I finally did uh, watch this, and pretty much I knew the logistics of what was going to happen and how it was going to end, mainly because A, it's a remake, and 2, it's being talked about quite a bit, so yeah. But to be honest, I was pleasantly surprised by this. I really did enjoy this film. And I also uh, like the fact that uh, it was uh, pretty uh, go gory a bit in places. You know, the, the murders that Chucky does are pretty brutal in a lot of cases. And uh, it had me laughing at them quite a bit. Just of how over the top and ridiculous um, some of them were. So yeah, really enjoyed um, that's in those remarks. Um, but I hated Andy's mother. I really hated Andy's mother. But the rest, you know, all the other cast, I really enjoyed in this. So, yeah. Special features are a bit... Eh. Like, literally, there's about ten minutes total because there's two five-minute ones of behind-the-scenes sort of stuff. And then there's... The soundtrack trailer is basically um, the main theme song for Child's Play as a music video and then it's just advertising, hey, the soundtrack will be coming out. And then there's a couple of other things in a gallery. So, eh. But, uh, yeah, it's uh, 12 99 uh, as I said, from um, HMV, Amazon and some other places. Though I did notice uh, other retailers like Zavi are charging £15 for it. So yeah, I, I don't know what's up with that, but that's that, Nick Nat Paddywhack, give it a good bone, so, yay. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, I bought something from Cash Converters for 25p. See? And it is Britney Spears' Greatest Hits. Yay for that. It, uh, the CD has a few cracks on the box, but um, the disc, while well, a bit fingerprinting, got a bit of a muck on there. Hopefully this uh, does actually play. And more importantly for me, rip. So let's put that on the disc drive. Yeah, um, I guess literally I was in cash converters, saw this for 25p, and I thought... Eh, why not? So yeah, 20 tracks. How long is this? Actually, I'd like to know. 71 minutes, okay. Okay, so it is a decent enough length. Although, with 20 tracks, you would have thought being longer, but literally all the tracks... In fact, the longest track on there is 4 minutes and 6 seconds. That's the longest track. So yeah, not particularly long. Let's have a look at the book look, shall we? Um, the only re yeah. So it's, um, the only Britney Spears tracks really I remember is um, 
oops I did it again toxic and baby one more time that they're, they're really the only ones I particularly know um, no track loads just a load of information and a load of random pictures of Britney Spears okay yay stuff on there more stuff more pictures and stuff oh album covers okay okay uh, actually when I was seeing this thing I was looking at the track listing um, for some reason it made me think of uh, Seed of Chucky and if you don't know um, well if you do know actually great but I'm going to tell everyone else as well. Uh, basically, when the trailers for Seed of Chucky were first released, uh, they had to put a warning. And no, it wasn't uh, for how shit the movie was going to be. No, no, no. It was um, a warning that Britney Spears does not appear in this movie. Because uh, if you remember in Seed of Chucky, there's a scene where he basically knocks... Uh, rungs down Britney Spears although it's not actually a Britney Spears it's a double but it's, you know the illusion is supposed to be oh look he ran down Britney Spears and she says oops I did it again um, but uh, Britney and that th threatened uh, legal action against them uh, so they had to clarify in the trailer that this wasn't Britney Spears so it just proves that Britney Spears was the scariest thing in <laughs> Seed of Chucky. And actually, thinking about that, yeah, that probably is the case. Yeah, Britney Spears was the scariest thing in Seed of Chucky. Ooh, 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 ooh. Yeah, that's fucking terrifying. Oh well, that's that. Knit nap paddy whack. Give a dog a bone! Okay, bit of a weird angle I know, but um, if you can hear a noise in the background, uh, that's because I've put the booster fans switched on on my uh, laptop. Because I'm having to re edit a video. Because the BBC took down a video, just blocked it didn't even put ads on it for about a 30 second clip that was a slowed down remix version of the Doctor Who theme from 1966 which is already on other videos of mine that they haven't taken down but whatever that's on my other channel let's get back to this channel a box Yay. A box. Let's open it. Are there any obvious pull tabs or anything? Oh, I'm going to have to bloody cut it, aren't I? Oh, well. Let's get that knife out. And uh, we shall cut it. Should do it. Come on. Put the knife away. It's a bit stiff because it's cold. The knife is cold because it has been sitting in a toolbox. Anyway. Yep, this is exactly what I thought it was. Um, here's a clue what it is. And here they are. So you might remember I unboxed, in fact here they are on the desk, um, charging, some white versions of uh, these Mix Audio uh, Play 2 earphones. And you're right, I did, not too long ago, uh, back in April or something. Um, 
Now, the thing is, uh, recently it, it, it's been raining quite a lot. And uh, unfortunately, one of the earphones on here, I thought, it, you know, stopped starting to stop working slightly however it, I don't know now whether I should have bothered buying these because it seems to have resolved itself pretty much because I let them dry out uh, for 24 hours and they seem to be okay now so but hey it's always good to have a spare pair because um, earphones don't tend to last um, as long as headphones basically because you know earphones not take them everywhere they get treated really a lot more harshly and they're a bit more fragile but yeah so for those who didn't see my previous unboxing of this ooh, look at this I opted uh, for the black ones this time I would have got black ones last time as well but uh, last time they didn't have any stock these were actually reduced even further than they were last time they're now £15 uh, from the Mix Audio website with um, free delivery in the UK which is all nice well and good so yeah 15 quid for these and their initial price I think was 50 pounds or something uh, along those lines booklet a manual Pathetically short USB charging cable. Really, really pathetically short. Okay, yeah, if I just lie all that in that box, that would be amazing. Now, something I always do on these is I always replace the ear tips because I don't like their ear tips. They're not very good uh, whatsoever. They're very uncomfortable. So I always replace the ear tips uh, with ones actually. Well, I either replace them with the extra skull candy ones I've got, or I just get a pair of earphones from Poundland and use them. Yeah, I've forgotten what these felt like. So where's my phone? Because the important thing is, make sure they are working. And no, the battery on them is completely dead. Utterly, utterly dead battery. So, these are going to have to charge. Um, and I got another one. Yep, yeah, Okay, so they are charging. So that is good. Um, so now that they're charging and plugged in, let's see if uh, they actually do work. All right, so they should be in pairing mode now. Let's just see if my phone. Will I pick them up? And um, yes, they are connected. That's a smith. So yeah, they are both working, which is good. And if you're wondering what I was playing, it was uh, Rick Ashley Walk Away. I was I was listening to um, Angels on My Side, and that's just the next track on the album. So yeah, that's all working well and. Good, so that's good, they're working fine. So that means um, what I'm gonna do is first of all remove these ear tips that come with them because these are 
not very nice that hard rubber it also comes with uh, these little I think they're, co they're supposed to be called fins come on but um, I never use them they're supposed to be good if you go to the gym believe it or not I used to go to the gym once upon a time uh, during my first couple of year first couple of years of high school uh, because my dad forced me to go to the gym and I hated it utterly utterly hated it you might be wondering well you clearly don't get any exercise at all and mm, I do um, do actually get exercise when I, I walk the dog which I'm the only person really who does walk the dog so that's uh, quite a bit of walking and when I go out which I do go out um, pretty much every day but yeah so that's them um, I can highly recommend these by the way um, I have had several pairs over the years because unfortunately every single pair of Bluetooth or even wired earphones I have they all eventually meet their end in one way or another because I do extensively use them. The reason I use these, the uh, Play 2s, is because they have up to 8 hours of battery. Um, I don't think I've ever gotten 8 hours of battery out of them. Though I have gone, I, I normally get probably about 6 or 7 hours easily out of them, so yeah. I mean, it just depends at what volume you listen to them at. If you listen to them at a low volume, then yeah, you'll get that eight hours, no problem. But, uh, you know, if you listen to them at a regular person volume, you know, like I do, then you're not going to get that quite eight hours. But still, it's good. It's good. It's, it's good. It get good. I should have put this back in, haven't I? What's this other piece of paper that is uh, in the box. I'm assuming it's just my invoice but you never know it might be a voucher. Yeah it's just my invoice. £15. Yep. Excellente. Enchanté. Interestingly though, I don't use Bluetooth earphones uh, for long car journeys, um, because, well, I'm sitting in a car for X amount of time. Why am I saying this? Because um, at the time of recording this, which is the 24th of October, on the 26th I'll be going to Leeds, uh, just for a day out there, as um, a birthday treat, because on the 30th, that's right, the day before Halloween, I'll be 21. And that'll be, be when you're watching this video because I'm going to be adding these on to me on wrapping birthday presents and shit. I don't know what else to say about this point. Moving along! Well, I'm rendering a video again, so that means the laptop's booster fangs are turned on, just to make sure that everything stays cool. But hey, we've got this to open in the meantime. And it's a plastic lined pull tab. My favourite. And it is what I thought it would be. This is actually, um, I think a couple of days early. I don't think it's supposed to be released until Monday. Uh, at, yeah, at the time of recording this, but... Here it is, Bojack Horseman Season 1. Now, I was debating whether to get the UK one or import the Season 1 and 2 uh, Blu-ray in America. However, um, I did a bit of calculations and I found out at the time... At the time... The import charges would actually be more expensive in total to buy season one and two 
the US Blu-ray and rather than just buy them individually here in the UK. So yeah, the, this is uh, retailing for about um, 22-ish pound, depending on where you go. Uh, this, I believe, I got it from Zavi. Yeah. Now the good thing about the UK one is since they're releasing each season individually, you're going to get individual artwork for each season. So that's good. I do know it was released, Bojack Horseman was released on DVD in Australia years ago. Yeah. And at the time of recording this, uh, Season 6 Part 1 was released yesterday and I've just watched that and oh boy is Part 2 going to have some things, yeah. But uh, something that's really disappointing, look at the slim list of special features. That is just piss poor, that. That is really, really piss poor for special features. But anyway, let's open the cellophane. So, um, for those who don't know, Bojack Horseman is my favourite uh, animated TV show. And unfortunately, it has been cancelled... And uh, the main reason is Netflix are cancelling a load of shows and it, to be honest it was a miracle that it did survive as long as it did. So yeah. I mean um, the Tukan Bursi was, uh, which uh, is a series, I think I only watched up to episode 6. Because it just wasn't my cup of tea really. Uh, that got cancelled after just one season, so Netflix are really cutting back because apparently they owe, uh, I think it's $12.4 billion. So, yeah, they're really, really cutting back. So, yeah, comes in a slipcase with a green and blue ray logo. And the season one and two American uh, releases basically this, except rather than being at taking place at day, uh, it's night time. But I actually do prefer the UK one. So that's something. Anyway, um, the inside of the Blu-ray itself, exactly the same as the front. So, it's a two-disc set. Yeah, that's right, just two discs. That's why the special features are so... Sli okay. Right then, this thing wasn't even properly attached. Uh, There we go. Interesting that this this is meant for three discs, but it doesn't have a the holster bit for the third disc there. I don't know why they've done it like this, but oh well. And if I remove that disc by right there, oh, it actually says Hollywood, which for season one it only says it for the first four episodes, I believe. And underneath here. You've got a episode list with a brief summary and also what special features are on each disc. Yeah, unfortunately, because Blu-ray boxes well, are generally blue, it does make it a bit harder to read when it's uh, black text on a blue background looking at it through a translucent blue case. So that is a bit irritating. I would have much preferred if it was just a little booklet there, but unfortunately that is not the case. So essentially uh, what I will be doing with these is, say it all with me, yes I will uh, be ripping them. Why have I opened 3D models? So we're going to open make MKV. I'm just going to put uh, this in. So, yeah. Overall, what's my favourite season of Bojack Horseman? Well, to be honest, um, I think so far it might be season 6 to be honest because generally each season that comes out for me personally is better uh, than the last although with Bojack Horseman um, you've got to watch every episode you've had to have watched ep every episode in order to get up to this point um, there isn't really you know a, a nice friendly uh, jumping on point for people, you basically you've got to start at the beginning 
And episode one is the weakest episode of Boj Bo of uh, Bojack Horseman. That is the weakest episode. Not that it's bad, but um, just compared to the rest, you know. I mean, episode one is basically, you know, a standard animated adults comedy. Whereas um, later on, it really starts going and everything. Thing. So, yeah. And also, uh, people find some people find Bojack Horseman too depressing. Whereas I find it quite uplifting. I find depressing things up uplifting mainly because they agree with me, <laughs> essentially. I mean, literally, I, I watched the first half of season six and it put me in a really good mood, so yeah. Season six will. I don't know when that's going to be released, but uh, season two is coming out soon. Uh, well, supposedly season, sorry, season six, uh, season two Blu-ray in the UK is supposed to be coming out, I think it's 2nd of December or something like that. Now, the thing is, this was meant to come out in September, and it was delayed a month, and it's not coming out now until the end of October, so it was delayed nearly two months. So, whether season two will come out that by then, I don't know. They might try and get season two out a bit quicker because, well, obviously, you know, Christmas and everything, so it makes sense to try and get that out ASAP. But yeah, I'm fine. I'm happy to finally, you know, have a physical copy of Bojack Horseman. Literally, the, there's been talks for years and years about having Bojack Horseman released on Blu ray. And it's been confirmed that uh, season three and four will come at a later date in America, and presumably will come over here to the UK. Five and six, um, don't know. Yes, Netflix might want to hang on to them for a bit longer. I don't know, but yeah, happy to finally have this in the collection. I had to show you this. Bonus running time at seven fucking minutes. Seven minutes. That is pathetic. All right, for the next couple of things I'm going to show you, I'm going to do it slightly differently. So first of all, I've uh, ripped uh, Bojack Horseman Season 1 Blu-ray. So that's all ripped. Uh, it just needs to be converted to MP4. Uh, basically just to cut the file size down a bit more and... So it can be played on pretty much any device. So yeah, that's all done. And by the way, yes, um, I did say in a previous bit on this unboxing that I'd be in leagues uh, on the 26th. Well, it's the 26th the day when I received this. I'm not in leagues. And the reason is, uh, basically, day was changed from uh, Saturday to Monday, basically due to weather. It's meant to be cloudy, but, uh, you know, dry on uh, the Monday. Whereas on the Saturday, which is today, it's supposed to be wet and raining. Anyway, um, something I got from Poundland, and this is open and I'll explain why in a minute. This Red Hot Chili Peppers California location. I can't bloody say it, can I? But yeah, put some Poundland, aka Music Magpie. These are the really cheap... Uh, cases um on the inside ooh lovely and um actually song lyrics for all of the songs on here as well so isn't that uh, nice and hunky dory i always like that when they put them on there the middle of there is more song lyrics yeah so that's nice, well and good. It's actually for a great California location is uh, frankly their best album. So yeah, it was nice to get uh, this, especially for a pound. I might pick up the picture disc of this at some point, uh, see if I can get a good price. But anyway, there's something I got off Facebook um, for just a fiver. And actually this person lived very close to me, literally a three minute drive or a 20 minute walk. So I paid a fiver for this. This is an Alba uh, boombox, PC, CD player, cassette player, and radio, all in one. 
and for fiver pretty good initially the seller said that uh, the CD player um, wasn't working however um, giving it a couple of tries and using a bit of uh, WD-40 on X I was actually able to get it to start uh, spinning round let's play track 4 And that's all we'll play of that. So yeah, uh, basically that's where that Red Hot Chili Peppers CD was, and um, I was playing other side there. But hopefully that's just enough to play without getting a YouTube copyright. Obviously, I am going to rip this. So yeah, basically I wanted this uh, for a smaller sort of boombox to have at home because uh, most of my set equipment and that is kept at my granny's house and the reason for that is simply because well there's more room there so I keep all my audio equipment but I wanted a, a smaller one just for them, just so I could listen to cassettes and also uh, record uh, cassettes here as well so that's helpful so with this I can record from the CD player which is all nice well and good which is uh, generally how I rec uh, record and mask uh, pretty much all of my cassettes. I, d I mask them from a CD, generally, because then you can just make copy after copy after copy with no degradation between copies. Yeah. Which is why um, my cassettes that I make myself generally will sound better than a pre-recorded album made back in the day, because the way that they would work is basically... Um, the tapes were all ran off a masker tape and every so often they would have to swap out this masker tape so if you got a copy that was at the end just before they swapped out the master tapes that would sound worse and to be honest the mastering wasn't as good as it is today so yeah but anyway uh, the cassette mechanism in it works as well and I've uh, put something in there just to play so let's do it Cassettes always have about a 10-15 second bit at the beginning where it's just blank and that's basically Doctor Who Earth and Beyond by Peter Angelides. Now it does sound like the tape speed there is uh, suffering from a lot of wow and flutter or could just be the mastering of that cassette. Uh, not sure. But yeah, um, if you're wondering what that was, it was this. Because uh, it's one of the few cassettes I just had to hand at the moment at home. And the reason I chose this is because this has uh, no Dolby noise reductions. Because, well, this cassette player has no Dolby noise reduction. Yeah. Well, so, uh, basically, this is also. A gotten uh, some batteries for this uh, this is a stiff panel at the back which I don't think has really ever been opened until I oh, oh there we go so this takes six C cell batteries yes six it is very power hungry although you can run it off uh, AC as well in fact over here that's the AC power cable for it just your standard um, figure 8 power cable so that all works nice well and good uh, let's try I don't know let's try another cassette that I've actually listened to a bit of so the typical uh, John Pertwee's final interview let's put that in there it does have a nice hefty weight and it does feel pretty good uh, quality although this wouldn't have been an expensive device it probably would have been around I'd say I don't know, 50-ish quid? 
30 to 50 From 1970 months. until 1974, John Pertwee was the Doctor. After spending 20 years doing funny voices... Okay, so I think it is just the really shitty mastering of this cassette. Because uh, this one, as you can hear, sounds uh, absolutely fine. So that's all nice one good. And the reason I put batteries in it is uh, basically so that it doesn't have to take up another one of my sockets because literally I do not have any free sockets and plus um, the wire, mm, actually this wire probably is just about long enough to reach over here. The classic dag test of a slow eject mechanism. But uh, yeah, it also has obviously a headphone out, no auxiliary in, because really that wasn't commonplace, because generally people would either be listening to CDs or the radio or obviously like, sex and recording off the radio. In fact, by the time these things were, I think these are uh, from the late 90s, early 2000s, generally what people would use their cassettes uh, for is, because by this point most people, pretty much everyone had switched over to CDs anyway. They would just use the cassette player solely for just recording off the radio. I don't... is there the winding? Yeah it is, okay. Why is it taking so long to rewind? Ah, there we go. I don't think... There we go, it rewound. But yeah, um, to be honest, not an awful lot to say about this. Also, um, Ariel is fully intact. And to be honest, um, this looks in pretty much immacu almost immaculate condition. And it actually sounds pretty good. It's actually got some pretty decent uh, bass on it. And that, the only thing is, is there's a slight, slight ding there on the speaker grill and a slight scuff here and uh, one on the corner there but other than that pretty much immaculate condition and it feels pretty weighty pretty solid and that's oh get a bit more on camera there we go so yeah I'm very very happy uh, with this especially considering I uh, only paid a fiver for it so yeah happy days and um well just more happy days, I guess. Hooray! Hello, I've just got back from uh, Leeds. And, oh boy, I am absolutely bloody knackered. Yeah, I have literally walked for miles and miles and miles today. I reckon I've probably walked... Let's see. I know I've walked at least 12 miles today, but... That's just bare minimum what I know I've walked. I've literally been everywhere around Leeds, so, yeah. Um, apologies if my voice sounds really croaky. Unfortunately, um, I didn't get much sleep at all last night because, which is really unfortunate, the day before going to Leeds is uh, because um, I've uh, got a really bad cough at the minute, so not very good. Um, anyway, the first thing I'll show you, something came in the post while I was out, and as you can see, it's clearly from Music Magpie. So we'll open that and have a look, and it's exactly what I think it's going to be. It's Batman Returns on Blu-ray. Yes, Batman Returns. Uh, so I do actually, I already have this on a DVD, but I don't have it on Blu-ray, and I'll probably pick up Batman 89 uh, on Blu-ray at some point. But yeah, I saw this going pretty cheap used. Uh, I just thought, why not get it? <clears throat> Rip it and then I'll be able to uh, watch it and enjoy Batman Returns on Blu-ray. Um, my DVD copy of that is down there somewhere. But uh, this year, this was actually re-released, you know, on Blu-ray, which, as far as I'm aware, the regular Blu-ray is exactly the same as this one. Um, as far as I'm aware, though please let me know if that is otherwise, but it was also released on 4K Blu-ray as well, so yeah. 
So if anyone does own the 4K Blu-ray and, you know, it has anything extra, then please let me know. But as far as I'm aware, it's exactly the same as this, except it's obviously rescanned for 4K. And uh, it's mm, sort of true 4K, sort of. But I won't get into that right now. Um, <coughs> my cough is actually uh, a lot better than it was before. I was looking coughing my guts out um, earlier on today. But now it's seeming to have settled. Also, I'll, I'm going to put my earphones on charge. It's probably a good idea. I always take two sets of earphones when I am um, go away on long trips. Uh, generally, I take uh, a Bluetooth pair for when I'm walking around, and I take a wired pair. Uh, I take a wired pair for the actual car journey itself because, well, there's not much point in bringing Bluetooth earphones when you sit in the car. You know, which is also why I've got my tablet here. And if you're interested to what I was watching on the way there, well, I was watching some music videos, um, but uh, the main thing I watched uh, was Horrible Histories. Yeah. Anyway. Let's have a look at some vinyls I got from HMV. And no, not pop vinyls, the good type of vinyls, vinyl records. Linkin Park, One More Light. Yes, I finally did get it on vinyl. So yeah, Linkin Park's last album, um, 1899. Uh, it's pretty much, you know, that seems to be the standard uh, price of it. I haven't really seen it any cheaper or dramatically cheaper. So yeah, 1899 just seems to be the price. And some places are charging more than that. And oh, oh dear. I'm trying to find out what a bit to. Oh. Has that done it? I swear on these shrink wraps they should have a pull tab or something just to help you get going. Now I might keep the shrink wrap because this, this part here, is just a sticker that they put on the front. And it was the same with the uh, CD as well. I might keep the string crack if I don't know. Ideally I would have slit it along here, but uh, unfortunately uh, there was no way to get my fingernail in there. A little bit ding there. Fix that out. It does feel pretty thin cardboard. So first thing is, oh that is nice. Oh come on focus. There we go. A nice a big looks. Um do I want to overwrite this one? No. So yeah, we've got a great huge big booklet. Let's have a look inside. I imagine it is literally just a larger version of uh, what's on the C D. And it is, it is, uh, it's basically on this side it's all the track lyrics, however since, you know, it's a lot larger, I'm actually able to uh, perfectly read it. So that's nice. And, uh, that's the only other artwork of note to show. So yeah, we'll put that to one side just there. I don't know if this is 180 gram. It might be. There is no download code in there. I didn't think there would be. Uh, also, ooh, that is just a cheap, nasty paper sleeve. Yeah, that seems unfortunate. But the record itself is fine. Um, I don't think, I don't know if it's 180 grams or not. Unless it actually says, it's hard to tell with doing an E B comparison. So, but it is just standard uh, black vinyl. And since there's only 10 tracks, they literally split it 50-50. Uh, yeah. 
This is probably my joint favourite Linkin Park album, along with Hybrid Theory. Because I really do love this album, and obviously, I had to get six on air vinyl to listen to it. Uh, yeah, you can also see, if I put up the light, the hands and that going around, which wasn't on the CD version. But yeah, I do quite like uh, this artwork. I just wish it wasn't so, you know, thin and uh, flimsy feeling. Because already there's a few dings and creases. I don't know if that was just not visible through uh, the, the shrink wrap box. Yeah, that is a bit irritating. But anyway, oh, I forgot to put this back. Back. It is nice that it does come with a booklet though. But anyway, since I bought that, I was able to get this next one for $9.99. Otherwise, it would have been £25, and it is The Killer's Wonderful Wonderful. Now, the CD is also only £3 at HMV for the standard version, I think. I'm not quite sure, but it's only £3, so I have ordered one of them because the shop didn't have any, they just had the regular one, which was 5 99 so... Yeah, but if this does have a download code, which I doubt it will, then uh, I'll cancel my order on that. But I don't think it will, so... That order's probably going to stay. There we go. So yeah, uh, this album is from uh, 2017, and I haven't listened to any of it. For I might have heard a couple of songs here and there, but. Um, to be honest, until literally today, or was it yesterday? I wasn't, you know, yesterday, until last night, I wasn't actually aware of its existence. But, here it is. Hooray, hooray, hooray. You can see the track listing there. Unfortunately, it doesn't tell you, um, on the back here, what tracks are on what side or on what disc? I think this is this two years or one? It's just one. So that is irritating because not pretty much on every other vinyl ever they'll basically say this is what's on side one, this is what's on side two. But uh, this one, no, not the case. A yeah, nice bit of artwork and. Uh, Love and fish. I do prefer the fold out ones like this, they just feel a bit more sturdy. And this, I believe, is a hundred, yeah, that's 180 grams. And is there a download code? No, so I was right to uh, order the CD. I thought so. Yeah, this is. This actually has a really nice um, proper plastic lined sleeve, and that is 100. So yeah, that Lincoln Park one was not 180 gram. This one definitely is. You can definitely feel it. So it does say on the record itself uh, what's on each side. So that's all nice, uh, well and good. So basically these will be going off to my granny's house where my turntable is in order to uh, listen to them on, on my turntable there. So let's gently put this back in. The problem with paper sleeves is uh, they're always a lot more difficult to s slide back in because they create so much friction with the cardboard. Come on. There we go. There we go. All nice. In in. In in in. And I do quite like this uh, artwork. It's quite nice. So yeah, um, 
that's them that that's literally uh, all I got from uh, Leeds to be honest um, I probably I could have got these from uh, Ancient V here I think uh, but I don't know they, the deal on this one must be recent because I haven't seen it advertised anywhere normally HMV, uh, when they have a seal on their vinyls, they generally put them out in the front, but this one they haven't. At least not of yet. So, yeah, and that's. Nick Nat Paddywhack, uh, give a dog a bone. I uh, guess. Mm. Uh, also, pretty much any vinyl that is uh, with uh, We Are Vinyl, they always tend to get, they always get a download code, so. If you're wondering about them, you can always look up artists, but otherwise, it's a, it's normally a, it will not be included type of deal. Yeah. So that's it for that, I guess. And, um, there, there, there. Well, today is the day. It is my 21st birthday. Ooh. And it's about 20, 25 past six in the morning. Because uh, I'm going to be going for Toby Carfrey uh, breakfast. So, yeah. Hello, Mother. Anyway, I've been asked to open this gift first, which is from my granny, who's also gave me money. So that's nice. And I can see immediately what it is. It is something I did ask for. A new shirt, which is the, the exact same as the shirt I already own because I really like this. Yeah. It's a uh, maroon sort of burgundy colour, which also matches my coat, which is nice. And a pack of Harry Bows. Yay! I really like Harry Bows. So that's nice. And yeah, despite my birthday being the day before Halloween, this is a Christmas uh, one of them because, you know, Halloween is only in the shops in September. From October onwards, it's bloody Christmas stuff. Actually, you know what? That's a lie. I remember I was seeing Christmas stuff in uh, B&M in late August, along with the Halloween stuff. They literally got the Christmas stuff and the Halloween stuff at the same time. Also, I'm sucking a lozenge because I'm full of cold at the minute. And not very well. Uh, again, I know what this is. I know what all of my presents are pretty much because well, I was the one who ordered them and I'm currently owed the money for. Oh, oh, I thought I was going to get this for Christmas, but in Skydex Berkey. Uh, oh, Mum, you bashed it up! She bashed it up. I'm now annoyed. Yeah, this is the revised version uh, that came out this year of uh, the 2018 BM sets. Everyone, this mainly for our uh, fourth doctor. So, you know, he didn't have the weird painted boots to make them look like trousers and shoes. And these. Yep, this is what I thought it is. I don't know where the other one is unless it's in that bag. Shit, I am gonna need a knife. Unless... Yeah, I'm gonna need a knife. To the kitchen. I shall be back. Back from the kitchen with a knife. So this is going to be a vinyl record, and I know exactly what one this is going to be. Some people say, oh, doesn't knowing what all your, your presents are take the fun out of it? No, actually it makes it even better because I know what I like. Actually, when I, whenever it was surprises, um, well, they're normally shit. Because uh, only I know what I like. 
Believe me, I am much happier when I know what I'm getting. Um, side the side and this side. Oh, and it's falling out as I cut it. Okay. This is actually being sitting on um, top of a, top of a uh, sideboard for a month. But uh, yeah, this is Christina Angulera. Dirty. Yeah, so on side. So on side one is the full length version of the song. On the other side is the instrumental version and the a cappella version. Don't know. It's just a generic paper sleeve. I could have got the whole album, but um, to be honest, Dirty's my favourite song, and there's only a mm, couple of their songs on the album, and so I'd just rather get this because uh, you currently, at the time of recording this, cannot get uh, the script, which is the album that song's from, on its own on vinyl. Currently. I imagine they'll probably release that at some point, and if they do, it might be an HMV exclusive, possibly. Like uh, one of these others that I'm going to open. Um, actually, you know what, I'll get the knife. be easier. Let's put the camera down a bit, eh? There we go. I did ask my mum not to wrap them, because, you know, I hate... Scuff like wrapping, so at least most of them aren't wrapped in wrapping paper because uh, this is for her because she likes having things wrapped in wrapping paper even though she hates wrapping things up. I don't know why either, but whatever. Snickers with Twix, Maltesers, uh, Milky Way, Snickers, more Snickers than a Mars bar. So this is for me. Everything's for me. It is my day. I do what I like. So I'm just reaching in. I don't know what I'm picking up. Okay, I know what this is. This is off my sister, this next one. Uh, and it's from Music Magpie. There's some we got. Ooh, that's a bit crinkled. Scooby-Doo and the Boo Brothers. Yeah, I still have my VHS of this somewhere. Okay. Oh, it's going to be them. So, yeah, it's one of these discs, uh, for some reason, like, you can flip around both sides. Oh, look, there's the camera. So, yeah, um, what does it include? Special features. When Ghost Go Boo calls Scooby-Doo music video, okay. Oh, this is great, this is great. <laughs> I don't know if you can see this. Interactive menus are a special feature, apparently. Yeah. And then enhanced features for your DVD ROM PC. Whatever that means, as well. Yeah, you can tell this was early into DVDs, and we've got a few CDs as well. Uh, so these would all have been six quid, because they were two for three pounds. So. You know, like so. Let's put the camera back up a bit. There we go. So we've got Robbie Williams' album from was this 2017 or 2018, and it is the Heavy Entertainment Show, and it seems perfectly fine. And I will be uh, ripping this. I have listened to the album before on Spotify, but again, I wanted to own it because I did own. <coughs> <coughs> At one point, every Robbie Williams album, at one point. Yeah, only 11 tracks, that's on. Actually, you know what, put the vinyl there. There we go. Linkin Park. Actually, you know what, I didn't, I didn't have a look at the uh, booklet. I normally do that, don't I? Let's have, have a look at the booklet. Yes! Don't worry, I haven't destroyed the bags. You're a witness for that. Because my mum wants to reuse them. 
So let's zoom in a bit. There we go. So that's Robbie Williams getting ready for a fight. Robbie Williams in a fight. Boxing ring. This is actually the only Robbie Williams album to actually get an official release uh, on vinyl. Which is seems it's not a great album. Yeah. Oh, well, at least it's uh, something to the book looks, you know, not just a nothing. And that is literally just broke. This is just literally broke off this second. So uh, that's everything. Not particularly fussed though, um, because you know I'll be ripping this anyway, and then the CD can go f anywhere. Anyway, Lincoln Park. So this is we. I'm I can't read it. I'm dyslexic. Includes 15 tracks, including. Yeah, I don't really remember any tracks on this album because I'm no addict. But again, folds out. I'm doing it the disc itself. Hey look, that looks like hybrid theories cover. Wait a minute. It's got 20 tracks on it. Uh, and this enhanced CD includes bonus multimedia material. So I imagine if you stick it into a PC, then you'll get, I don't know, a music video or something? Um, yeah, you do. You get a music video. Which will be in really compressed quality in order to fit on a CD. You get this card. Uh, Join the underground official Linkin Park fan club. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Upon joining, you will receive new special edition LP underground CD release tracks, exclusive underground LP t shirt. Oh, you know, I read that there. Please allow six to eight weeks for membership. This card, I'm assuming, is woefully outdated. Mail to Los Angeles, okay. Because I've actually seen this album in the shops now on CD, and it no longer obviously comes in these uh, cardboard boxes, it just comes in a regular jewel case. Anyway, let's have a look at this. Ooh, isn't that nice? It's a very uh, papery one. This one, not the plastic one. I'm, I'm looking at this through the viewfinder as well. Quite nice, quite nice uh, artwork and stuff in there. All some of it hand drawn, some of it CGI renders. All um, pretty good, quite frankly. Ooh, I quite like that one actually. That was really nice. Again, uh, I'm just going to be ripping this. But uh, this album I haven't really listened to uh, at all, really. Any tracks I recognise? No, not really. Um, I don't think. Uh, okay. Well, I'll, what year was this released? Um, uh, no, 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 no. Would have been early 2000s, surely, at some point. Um, because this was the one that came out of. Quote me if I'm wrong on this, I haven't looked it up. 
but this is the one that came out before Minix Midnight, I believe. I could be wrong about that. Um, I don't know. I just dropped it on the floor. That was good. Uh, but again, gonna be ripping that. So yeah, that's gonna be interesting for that purpose. And finally, out of the CDs, Labyrinth, come in. Yeah, how many tracks on here? Ten. Okay, only ten tracks. Oh, oh that's good. Uh, just to show you, what's only there goes completely back. But this is annoying because a lot of Robbie Williams albums had this. Can you read that text? Yep, just if it reflects in the light, you can. Actually, you can see it better in the viewfinder than you can in real life. Yeah, I don't, I don't like it when they do that. Just have a matte black finish and then just have glossy black text. It makes it near impossible to bloody uh, read it. And oh, this whoever, whatever idiot had this before uh, me. Look at that. Same with seating. That means the booklet's been a bit uh, battered by the CD case. Okay, includes track lyrics. That's nice, that's good. You know I love my track lyrics and I do quite like a bit of artwork. And that is uh, quite nice, actually. I really do like that artwork. To be honest, I wish I had that as the cover art rather than that. Because that's much more interesting. In fact, I don't know if this is released on vinyl or not, but if it is, or if it ever does, please put that on the cover. That's much nicer than that. Getting some nicer artwork that could have gone on the front. Because the front artwork is head. With glasses reflecting stuff. Yes, I've seen that a lot of times, you know, in fact, you got some really nice artwork in the booklet. Why don't you use that? This just reminds me of Pitbull's uh, album. Oh, what's it called? Um, Planet Pit, there we go. Yeah, it reminds me of Pitbull's album Planet Pit. The cover, which was just Pitbull's head, and this is... Just labyrinth said. <coughs> My cough isn't as bad as it was, but it still kept me up all night. Let's um, zoom out again. The knife. Where's the knife? Here's the knife. Okay. Oh. Hey, it's a tub of celebrations. Because, you know, we're going to celebrate good times. Come on. And I actually treat everything that is in that bag. Next one it is. I was actually going to do this in the afternoon, but my mum wanted us to do it this morning. So, whatever. Again, not looking. Okay, this is clothes. This is another shirt. This... Yes, it is. Yeah, I quite like that one. That's very nice. I don't have a one exactly the same as this, so that is a different one. Well, yeah, that one's alright. I prefer the other one. Uh, ah. Uh, she got underwear, but she got the wrong size. You got the wrong size of underpants! So that's no good. Uh, 
these will have to be taken back Mother! Hey mother! You got the wrong size of underpants! They're too big! They are! They are! They're the same size as Dad's! Mine are a size smaller! I can't wear them! They're too big! They're too big! Have you tried them? Yeah, I've tried XL before and they're too big! Are you, too, are you finished? No. Well, how are you? Because you've got to take the dog out. I know. Well, they're too big. Oh. You can get, just give them to Dad and just get me... Actually, or I could get some today while I'm out. Charge it to Dad, though. Right. Anyway, I know what's going to be in this box, but... The first thing is, cassettes. Because, you know, since it's me, it has to have bloody cassettes in here somewhere. It won't be a birthday in Vox and them. So yeah, these are a pack of five uh, Maxell cassettes from Wilco for £4, which is what I requested because uh, generally these are the best ones and the best uh, value for the money. I'm going to shut that door to keep the noise of the me mum dry your hair off. There we go. Shut that door. Hopefully... Uh, Hopefully my mic will do a good job of isolating noise around me. Anyway, next thing. It's stuck to the cellar tape. There we go. I don't know why I should cellar tape this shut. Mm, probably keep it shut. Uh, again, we'll, we'll zoom out. So here's the box for this. So this is off eBay, this was uh, 12.50 because in Argos, because it is an Argos exclusive, it is, well supposedly, it's uh, £30 this. So first thing to note, yeah, it is a figure 8 power cable. Well you know it's electrical, but what could it be? Well. It's a Bush tape recorder. There you go. Yeah, it's a modern day tape recorder. One of the few actually, you know, um, decent enough ones, actually. The speaker on it is not very good because it's a single mono speaker, but uh, threw a headphone out. And that sounds perfectly fine. And uh, can, this is basically. Uh, a little cassette player to have at home, mainly for digitising cassettes that don't have Dolby noise reduction and that, so, and also recording to ones as well uh, yeah it also has a uh, mic input as well as a built-in mic, which I'll probably never use, it also has a USB this is not one of the ones that you can record to USB, there was a previous model to this where it could record to USB, but I wouldn't use that anyway because it would always record at a, a painfully slow 62 kilobit uh, bit rate, which would frankly just be worse than if you were to just, you know, listen to it on its, a cassette on its built-in crappy speaker. So I won't use that anyway. So this USB port is literally just for USB playback, and then you've got the mechanism down here for the cassette, which does have a nice um, slow eject. I believe, and also, like a lot of others, I believe this also has a stereo head, which is good because a lot of mon cassette players are mono only. Yeah, because they've only got a mono head, despite if they have two speakers or not, they might, them, a lot of them are just dual mono, particularly the cheaply Chinese ones uh, that you get. But this one, yeah, so, has a carry handle. Now, I was going to get a old stock Sony model from the 90s, however, that one is mono, but it's purposely mono. Because <laughs> uh, I found out from research, this one is actually stereo. At least on the headphone out. Because uh, these were generally used back in the day for uh, your 8-bit, 16-bit computers. 
the most famous of which you know being a Commodore 64 or a Sinclair BBC Micro actually no Commodore had its own tape drive but the rest of them you can just use something like this so yeah uh, and also the good thing about this as well is it run it can also run off uh, four C cell batteries which is a nice one good uh, I'm going to reach to grab this one. It's a present. Ah, now there's a story behind this one. And I'll keep this bubble wrap for you, Reese. Um, so yeah, this is uh, the original NECA Pennywise figure. Which, yes, I will be doing a review on at some point. You can see here on the back, the box is a bit bashed. And uh, basically, it was a fight with the seller to get, you know, any any money back on compensation on this. Ended up getting £2 on this, and it was a bit shady because they charged 5 99 delivery and 5 99 you know, for the Pennywise. And obviously it does not cost five ninety nine to deliver this. Uh, I'd say it probably costs I don't know, somewhere between three and five pounds at the very most, but not six. So that's clearly where they were making their money off, so yeah. I've actually got uh was it two pounds you got back on this? Yeah. Yeah, two pounds back on that, you know, which yeah, it was annoying but at least the bashing was on the back and not the front, unlike another one which I haven't got to yet. Uh, I think it was all your thing in that one. Uh, reach, reach. By the way, where's the other vinyl? What other vinyl? There was two. That there was another one up there. Oh, well, Dad must have passed it down. Yeah, because that one we'll get to in a sec. Oh, it's up there. It's up there. It's up there. Right, so I'll have to get that one down. You have to take the jacket if you're not going to get your breakfast. Right, I will take the jacket as soon as I finish this, I'm nearly done. Or can he not take them out, or can she not take them out? No, he's in the back. Can she not? She's not ready. Right, well, I'll be done shortly, alright? What time is it like? Ah, right, this is the other one. See how much little wrapping is done on this one? And this one is a. Uh, five to nine! Yeah! Right, that's fine. This one's bashed inwards on both sides. This is the Bride of Chucky Necker figure set. This was £47. And that's, you know, a lot cheaper than other places would charge. I've seen it's as high as £75. Again, we'll be reviewing this. This one, uh, initially the seller said, oh, we'll send you a wrapping paper. And I said, well, that's no good for a bashed box. And I said, look, either give me, you know, some of my money back or I want a refund. And eventually they settled on uh, £7 for the refund, so it ended up being 40 quid. If I can, I'll try and track down uh, just the box on its own. If I can, on eBay. Although I doubt any collectors are just going to sell the box for that on its own. Uh, we're nearly, nearly through, two more to go. What? Where's the bloody knife gone? Where's the knife? There's the knife. Ah, here we go. So, oh, this is being opened slightly, this thing's sitting on a shelf for ages. Bendy and the Ink Machine on PS4, yeah, finally got this. Um, I played the demo on PC back when it was released which was just the first chapter and now have it on PS4 and I wait for PS4 because I even though I could play it on PC I'd much rather play it on PS4 just because I prefer to do it that way so yeah don't care about PC Master Race that I just prefer to play on console that's just how I prefer to do things and this is from Australia yeah, it's Final Space Season 1 on DVD. Not available in the UK, but apparently available in Australia. This was imported off eBay. 
and I think it was £20, £22 with free delivery. So yeah, also I've actually already ripped this. But yeah, that's that. Um, the American US version is exactly the same, only it won't have uh, this on the front. The good thing about the Australian version is, is that uh, basically it's region 4, but basically all UK players can read reg region 4 discs, so I've actually tried this in a PS3 and a PS4 and both of it plays. And even if I didn't, I've ripped it fine. Um, annoyingly, still not available on Blu-ray. And also, the the behind the scenes and and uh, in, inside the episodes are literally one to two minute. I'm not joking. One to two minute interviews. Well, actually, no, they're less than that because most of it is just made up of clips. The interviews are about 30 seconds, and they're already available online. So pretty piss poor in special figures, but I wanted a physical copy of Final Space. So now I've got a physical copy of Final Space. So yeah. And there's one more thing to get. Uh ooh, what was that? The cassette burning over. There's one more thing to get. Am I going to be able to reach this? I got it! I got it! How are you buying I got it! Don't worry! I've got it! Thank you, mother! Do you like your, I'll give you a dark set. Wasn't a dark set, was that? Yeah, and it, how did it get bashed? Bashed? Nobody touched it. Well, it has gotten bashed. Anyway, last thing. Actually, no, I've got one thing in my room that's been sitting in my room. I'll have to open later. This is from HMV and is exclusive to HMV. Yeah, it's a vinyl record. What could it be? What could it be? Hang on, we're nearly there. Hey, this is the vinyl I was looking forward to and I've been waiting You're for. Get your breakfast. I know, I know. Don't worry, I will. Lady Gaga, the fame! This is uh, limited edition blue vinyl. I've got to see what this looks like. Oh no, all the corners are dinged. HMV, how could you? How dare you, HMV? Yeah, this is 30 quid. Um, the first time it's actually got a proper official release in the UK. Because in the US it was only released on a black vinyl, I believe. Yeah. Lovely. Jubbly do you. I'm just going to take one of these out. Yeah. So both discs will presumably be the same. Okay. That's actually quite a nice sleeve. Yeah, that's quite, that's actually quite a nice blue. On the picture, it made it look like translucent Black. blue. Black top. Nice. Right. Okay then. So. Oh. Actually, I think this probably comes with a download code, though I don't need it because I've ripped the CD. I don't know if it does actually. Actually, it might not. I don't know. It doesn't matter. I've ripped the CD anyway. Yay! Interestingly, though, this is just the theme. It doesn't have the theme monster on it. Um, because uh, that's going to have a separate release at some point. So, yeah, that was stuff I have unboxed for my birthday. Happy days! There's a couple other things to do, but I'll do them later, so maybe. don't know. I'm to film this one pretty quick. So the other last two gifts. 
here. I see fifth Doctor and Tana set. And an eighth Doctor and Dalek set, so yeah, that's it. It's the 30th of October today on my birthday, by the way. So yeah. Gotta go off to breakfast now.